Welcome back to Leave It on the Dance Floor. Abby Lee Miller here. Michael David here. What a crazy day, huh? Yes. We, it was busy, busy, busy. As always. Traffic. Yeah. I'm leaving LA because of the traffic. And yet we get here and there was traffic. Still traffic. Yeah. On a Sunday. Of course. Yeah, but you know, we're here in Jacksonville, Florida for the Ultimate Women's Expo, which you had the amazing time uh, giving the keynote address at. Yes, the keynote address today at the Ultimate Women's Expo. And it's great because it's empowering women. Mm -hmm. Most of the business, I would say all of their businesses that attend are women owned. Yeah. You know, it's a female company that comes, they sell their goods or they promote their products. And it's nice to see. And a lot of startup companies that happened during COVID are there. And, uh, you know, if I can hold a product and help people promote their their items, a lot of it is, uh, you know, facial products and skin tightening and, uh, you know, women's fragrances, women's health items. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. It's nice to see those ladies. And yeah. And a lot of them had stories too. You know, oh. there were some people that came up to you and even said, you know, like, Oh, you know, uh, what do we have a chiropractor woman give you a product? Yes. And how about the two blind girls? Yeah. They, uh, I believe they had a booth and then they, um, were escorted up, you know, obviously, and then you got to meet them and they were so sweet, beautiful mm -hmm. and dressed. And they had gorgeous tiara crowns, rhinestone on. Oh my God. And the um, see, vision sticks, right? Yes. The walking stick. Walking sure sticks. Yes. The yes. They were solid rhinestone. Beautiful. That, it was, that was crazy. I like that. If For those I can, of you if watching. If I'm walking again and I have, you know, yeah. I might have to bedazzle my walker. Or even your chair. Well, yeah. Let's not even talk about who has all the stuff for my chair. Oh yeah. No, we're, to be we'll, we'll get into that at, yeah, at a later yeah, date. Yeah. Yeah, so we're here and we're back. Leave it on the dance floor. We are in our couple episodes in now. What do you think? It's crazy going back and rewatching and It's painful. Yeah, I know. I'm torturing. I Abby feel guys. like I get dragged here to do this. I mean, some stuff I like to talk about, but other stuff, I just forget it happened. I don't try to block it out. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was toxic. Mm -hmm. I just forget yeah. that it happens. And Ugh. The biggest thing that bothers me is when all the moms say, the girls never watch the show. Oh, my daughters never watch the show, blah, blah, blah. Hello, in the bus, every Friday, on the way to the next competition, they were watching Dance Moms. I heard my own voice behind mm -hmm. me, because I sat like in the middle, yeah. not up in the very front behind the bus driver where I wanted to be, because mm -hmm. I could have leaned on him physically and pushed my hand on his thigh to get him to go faster. Oh, Abby and the bus drivers. I think yeah. the fans know uh, you, you oh, love your bus drivers, right? Well, you know, <laughs> they don't know the area. They come from a couple hours away. Yeah. They pull in the parking lot wrong. Then they pull out going the wrong way. And it, it, it's just like, I drive that every day. So I know where I'm going. And let me tell you guys, I drove us here today and Miss Abby is the best driving instructor, director, everything, you know? Really? Uh, well, I mean, you know, there's some times where I want to scream, like but in, I'm in the, I'm a backseat driver in the front seat, in the middle seat, yes. beside you, behind you. It doesn't matter. But it's always like, you know, just working with a teacher. They tell you stuff that sometimes you don't even want to hear. Like, oh, you got to get over in the lane. You have room. It's okay. You're, You're all like, good. Go, go, go. I'm just, yeah. I'm just a good driver. Yeah. You Let's just, face it. yeah. And I mean, Let's hey, you directed people. traffic. You directed I'm, traffic I, in season I five. I can stop traffic. Oh yeah. That's that what was... I always said. I wanted a guy that could stop traffic. Mm. You know, he was just so hot. He would walk out in the street and everyone would be like, <gasps> yes. well, maybe for Halloween, we'll get you a traffic uh, outfit because <laughs> you can, we could put the Abby Lee logo on stop it. Traffic. Yeah. Yes, limited, back limited. To the, back yeah. to the point about the yes, kids. Yes. So if you don't think those kids watch that show, especially, you know, if they didn't win, mm -hmm. if the group didn't win, they went back to watch it to see what did we do wrong. And then the, the mothers, are they just stupid? We were doing reunion shows, right? And during the reunion show, this always bothered me so bad. They would want to go back and do different routines mm -hmm. that we had done yeah. that were either iconic or maybe didn't win or there was something special about yeah. them. So they wanted to go back and do routines. Now we're 13 weeks later, you want to go and do a routine that we did in week three. 
Mm. So in order to remember it, the kids had to go watch the episode, not the whole episode, but they had to watch the routine over and over and over to try to learn it in their heads, yeah. right? So they watched the show, ding, 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 yes. And then also, the, wait, let me finish. Yeah. The, also, the kids would watch to learn the choreography and to remember it, but then they also watched when it was something silly or something funny. And I just think it's a crock of crap. And let's just face it, moms, if you were too dumb to watch, Jocelyn Siwa was watching, JoJo was watching, other people were watching, and now they've one-upped you. Yeah, I mean, I just remember from my experience, you know, working on season eight with you, like on the bus, that's all the kids did. They literally watched the show, probably, you know, not with this in, in mind, but they, you know, were seeing exactly what the show came out looking like. So at least in my head, you know, being older, I would watch it and try to think, oh, make sure that I look like this at the competition. Like, don't make sure that I'm slouching here. Like, you know, when Abby comes in, that's when the camera's gonna be on all of us. Just like little things that they probably didn't even realize that they were picking up on. Slouchy? You really watched the show and thought, oh my God, my posture's horrendous. Well, I should sit up straight. I did say season eight, okay. right? Oh yeah, So today, actually, that's a good segue because we are looking at season two. One of the most iconic seasons. Actually, I would say season two and season three are probably the fans' favorites, I would say. I love season seven and six because I feel like the dancing really came a long way and the group was just so together. Don't say that because I left in season seven. Well, you left at the very end and then, I mean, who watched after you left, yeah, right? I, I mean, that wasn't that wasn't the <laughs> thing. Watched. But anyway, That's so... I got a call from the network every single day begging me to come back. Well, I mean... I don't think that that'll sound surprising to the fans because the content after you left was you know, questionable. questionable. Questionable, I guess I would maybe not even say cute, but it's okay. We, we don't talk about it. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so. We don't talk about seven. <laughs> so yeah, season two and season three, everybody's favorites. So we're actually taking a look at nationals from season two. All right. The word nationals. Yeah. Talk about nationals. that for me. So for people that don't dance and watch the show. They really, like you, mm -hmm. for example, I know you did theater and music and voice and all that. However, some dancing. But you didn't dance for a studio on a competition team. No. So the season goes like school, September to June, mm -hmm. and nationals are in July. Yes. The television show just made up nationals. That yeah. we were, it wasn't a fake competition, don't get me wrong. It was nationals, we're going to nationals. It was just a competition during the year. Nationals are a week long. They're either in Orlando, Las Vegas, on a ship somewhere, big time, yeah. big, big deal. And my kids, we went to New York City, Vegas, the Bahamas, Orlando many times, and you stay for a whole week, you see shows in Vegas or Broadway shows in New York, whatever, it's a whole trip. There's a banquet, like a black tie dinner with kids in the gowns. And that's nationals. That's what you work for all year. This was just another random competition on the weekend. And they made it seem such a big deal. Even back in season two, because I feel like in season one and season two, every like I feel like the show, at least based on the fan viewing it, they kind of hopped on to whatever nationals was happening at the time. Like you said, maybe it was just a competition. But do you think in season one and season two, they were still actually I, I'd at have that to look time? at the dates. Yeah. If it was in the summer... At the end of June and July, then yes. For fans watching or listening, definitely let us know um, whether you reach out via DM, comments, you know, if you know about that. Actually, for any fans that are going to be watching or listening to this, uh, let us know, you know, if there's any kind of, uh, you know, information that you might know that we might not have on hand. There's a lot of information that we dive into on this podcast. Uh, just let us know. No, We'd love they to know everything. The fans know everything. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, I know a lot. Obviously, I know a lot. Like, I was a super, like, sometimes too much. Super freak fan. Yeah. Super That's how we met. Fan. Yeah. That's how we met. Yeah. We well, weren't a super freak fan then. No. But I realized after talking to you for mm, 10 minutes that you were a super freak that fan. That I, I, like, knew my stuff. She, yeah. He like, was very knowledgeable about the yes. show. And I'm not, because I lived that life. And yeah. that's not everyone remember. While I was shooting season one, two, three, whatever, I was also running a business a dance studio with the competition dance team that was competing. Yeah. So I had the show competitions and then other competitions at the same time. And if we weren't at a regularly scheduled ALDC competition that we were attending, sometimes the kids in the studio would come along and they would compete. And that's one of the things that I'm sorry I didn't get in my contract of the 
500 things that I should have had in my contract. Yeah, one but of my kids in my studio could have come to all the competitions that we attended free of charge yeah. at a discount yep. and done all of their solos. But the show didn't want that because they knew that other kids in my studio would beat the kids on the show. And that did happen. Oh, I bet. But they didn't want those kids there because they knew that those ALDC kids that would scream into the microphone, Abby Lee Dance Company, were not the kids on the show. And mm. we would they would beat their team. So they didn't want them anywhere in sight. And so what if they came? They could have edited them out. You know, if they weren't well, the main cast, like I, they could have just not included them. Well, there's a show and we should have her on as, as a guest on the podcast. She did a show out of Atlanta like Georgia or South Carolina or something, Dancing Dolls. Yeah. The Dancing Dolls. And she was smart. Well, I spoke to her uh -huh. before she signed a contract. And she had a big group, like 35 kids on her team. I yeah. had 148 on my team, but she had 35 kids on the team. They only focused on five kids and five moms, but all 30, whatever, 35, 38, whatever it was, they were in the routines in the actual routines and got to go to the competitions. Uh, let me tell you guys, you know, obviously being with Abby at all these events, all these classes, you know, every Q and A we do, the advice that she gives is so valuable in itself, whether you're a dancer, or just a fan, the advice, you know, legal advice, well, obviously you've gone yeah, through it, I've, you know? I, I learned by, you know. Experience, Well, experience and mistakes, unfortunately. Yeah, and, everybody makes mistakes though, but, that's but fine. But I would, but mine were, you know, Big world, ones. worldwide. Yeah. So those kids would have benefited and those parents of those kids would have been appreciative mm -hmm. that they got to, they got like a couple bucks free or off a competition fee that they got to go and compete and get on that stage. And also when the TV cameras are there, it's exciting when all those producers are in the audience and running around, it adds another element to a dance competition that you wouldn't normally have. Yeah. And they, my students would have been, so kids from other studios, that we don't know that weren't on a TV show that had nothing to do with it, all got to come and be on TV. But my own kids that were jeopardized, let's say their training was slightly jeopardized by the show. I tried not to let that happen, but let's face it. They didn't get all the perks. They could have at least come to a competition and danced mm -hmm. and they were allowed. Like it was nuts. All the crap I went through. Yeah, but I mean, at this competition, uh, well, let's talk about the opening of the episode. First, you in the pyramid were wearing a pink tracksuit with your Abby Lee logo. I've I never seen you in of, pink again after that, by I the way. I always looked like a piece of, uh, what was the big square gum? The, not bazooka. Big that was chew? like flat. I don't know, but it was a big old piece of bumble gum. Yeah. That's what I look like. Yeah, but I mean, it was fabulous as always. Uh, I think that this episode, you're like the hair that you have now that has grown back since your recovery and everything, like that is what I see in this episode. So it's very much like a very long time ago, but it's very like. I feel like my makeup artist didn't show up. Probably. Diana was still on at the time. She no, was on she since was, season one, right? Or no, did no, she no, come no, on? No, 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 She came on after Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition. Okay, that makes a lot of sense because clearly your glam had a whole evolution. Oh as my as we'll we'll try to I not from talk about drag it the whole time. Queen yeah. to, to oh, it's just crazy. It's yeah. just crazy. But now here you are, you've learned along the way. And you know, guys, let me tell you, it's not easy doing your hair when you're in a wheelchair. It's very hard. And you know, Abby really pulls through and it's crazy the what she my does. Arms so bad, you know. Because you're using a curling iron. Well, and after you're... my fall in the Pittsburgh airport, mm -hmm. thank you to American Airlines and the people that work in the Pittsburgh airport. Well, this is all public record. Yeah, the Pittsburgh yeah. airport itself. Yep. Uh, my I tore my rotator cuff to my uh, subscapulara and my supraspinatus, and there's two tears. And so putting my arms up to tease my hair you know, to back comb it and mm -hmm. hold it with the other hand to put the curling iron up and put the hair in. It's the wear and tear on my shoulder just doing that. Yeah. And I don't know, for kids out there, it might not seem like anything, but for women that are watching, I will never, ever in my life hook a bra behind my back. No. My arm just cannot go back there. It's excruciating. Or I'll, I feel like I'll dislocate my shoulder. So that's part of the problem. But what was my excuse during season two? Yeah, I don't know, girl. But... <laughs> So in the week before, you know, you talk about the competition. See, why can't we flash that up there? Like what I look like in that brown and orange outfit? 
Well, uh, why isn't that up for, there? For those of you watching, like we'll show a picture, you know. And remember, guys, if you want to watch our full episodes, you have to go over to our Patreon page. It is just Abby Lee Miller, um, and there is a lot of content on there, right, Abby? Oh yeah. I mean, content that literally nobody's seen. Like, there's that, sometimes that where. Like- well, it is a not so um, controversial sounding OnlyFans, in my opinion. Oh, I'm it's, controversial. Yeah, I'm, I think I think what we all assume about OnlyFans, it's not that, but it's like top secret stuff. Yeah, no, it's subscription based, and you know, it's exclusive, and it's you know, obviously exclusive. It's exclusive for sure. And th- let me tell you guys, like when I'm with Abby, or even just when I'm not with Abby, she'll send me pictures that pop up on her phone, and let me tell you guys, her phone is a gold mine, a yes. gold mine. There are pictures from the rehearsals. There's pictures Like 2012, from, and like there's we all have this everything. stuff on there, and I don't have time to send it to anyone. I fall asleep with my phone in my hand. Sometimes at night, because I'm laying on my back to get rid of the pain, and the pain that never, ever goes away, mm-hmm. and I hold my phone up over my head, and it literally falls in my face, and I'm gonna chip my teeth because of the phone. So I, I just don't have time to send you all those pictures, but they're they're gold. Yeah, and for those of you who are subscribers, you are going to be seeing exclusive content, you know, and that is literally of everybody. You know, some photo shoot content that never made it to our website. It's like being in the dance studio in 2012. Yeah. With, with the kids. No, and it's like you have stuff and from backstage, promos. And yeah. Back, yes. Um, yes. So head over there to Abby Lee Miller on Patreon. It's linked in the show notes as well as uh, Instagram and Abby's link tree. So uh, you say that intensity was intense the week before. You had Mackenzie who forgot a little bit of the dance, oh, you know, but she was so cute. She did all the tricks and she looked, you know, so cute, at least to the viewers. But then who, when it who came- don't know anything? Those viewers? Uh, yes, those viewers. But then when it came down to a little handshake, that's where uh, she froze. Poor little thing. But- Poor little thing. I had to put a routine on the stage. Mm -hmm. I had to do whatever it took, whatever Mm -hmm. it took, screaming, yelling, bribing, kissing, being nice, being silly, being goofy, being mean, whatever it took to get that kid out on the stage doing a dance in three days, two and a half days. And hey, for six years old, now let me ask you. And she couldn't be on camera. Yeah, for a certain amount of hours. Oh my gosh, so that killed us because we always had to get to her solo first when Mm -hmm. she was doing a solo, and then we teach it to her, she'd go in the other room to work on it alone and forget it. Mm. So then she tried to do it like in a different order and it didn't make sense. So then when she came back, it was like reteaching her the next day. So six year olds prior to the show that you trained, would you say that they'd be able to learn a routine in two days and pull it out on, you know, and compete it that weekend? Or do you think that just the the nature of the show for a six year old? Most six year olds, no. Okay, cool. So, you know, we can give her that at the time. She definitely came a long way, at least as far as remembering. Right. But so anyway, so it was solos week. So everybody had a solo. I loved those weeks. And I think the fans did too, because literally you got to see every single dancer do some kind of routine, whether it was kind of recycled from prior times and nobody knew. And and Michael, those weeks killed us. Oh, I bet. I mean, you only did them like, I think once a season. And then at at some point you just stopped doing them. Do five (laughs) numbers in the amount of time that the kids could be on camera. Mm -hmm. And then, the time that they couldn't be on camera, but we could have them in the studio was none mm. because other classes were going on. None of them were homeschooled and there just wasn't enough hours in the day. You know how ice skaters, they get ice time mm-hmm. at five o'clock in the morning. Well, nobody, I wasn't going in at five o'clock in the morning to teach the kid before they went to school. Not when that we just left the studio at 9.30 the night you before. You had your mother as well. You had your dog at the time. Like you had responsibilities. You had the studio. You Like you weren't going to, you already did take out so much time of your life that you couldn't get, you know, them there earlier and, you know, do all these extra things that there people were days think you could have. Days in the week, weeks in the month, months in the year that I worked 16 hours a day, 17 hours a day. And that's just not human. Like that, and you still work a lot, even after all that you've been through. You right. Know, you still, I like, just I see it. I lay at the beach and read a book. Yeah. And I don't get to do that. I carry a book around. I always mm-hmm. have one with me, but I read like a page a day because oh, on my staycation, you know, I read 150 books. Which is more than a lot of people can say that they've read in a lifetime. I could not even say that I've done a tenth of well, that in my lifetime. 150 so. books. So let's, we'll talk about that later, but mm-hmm. let's go back to the five solos. Yes. So not only did Mackenzie forget a little step 
poor Paige. She, you know, it was the one with the couch. Uh, City of Angels. It that was. costume was gorgeous. Gorgeous. And, and, you know, she was such a pretty girl. And it's so sad, you know, like as a viewer, seeing, you know, the kids, you know, who are just so happy most of the time. And then when they're put in that environment, sometimes not by their own choice, whether it's production or their mothers that still keep them there or the contracts, whatever the excuse may be, seeing that is just never easy. And I know that you could agree. You never liked seeing your kids cry. Oh, God, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, one, it was and, annoying for you. And, and, when then, and when you're teaching a child in the room mm-hmm. and you're teaching them this solo, you know they're not going to do it. You know they're going to fail miserably. So why put them in that situation? Let, let me take you out of dance moms for a minute. Mm-hmm. Let's go to a dance studio. Yeah. Any dance studio. The mother wants their kid to have a solo. I want my kid to have a solo. I want my kid to have a solo. I want my kid to go into the front desk. How do we get a solo here? Da, 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 da. What person on earth wants to put their kid out on a stage to be humiliated? Mm. Why wouldn't you wait, parents watching, listening? Do they listen? Well, listen and watching. For okay. those of you who are going to be watching us, you know, you, you don't All get right. to see the full episodes. And parents listening, why would you want to put your child in that situation? Wait until the dance teacher comes to you mm-hmm. and says, hey, your kid has great potential. They would benefit by some private lessons. I'm thinking about a cute little solo for them. They're five, six years old. Let's try it. Let's see how it works. Go to a little, you know, kind of a dinky competition local and let's see how they do. That's what you wait for as a parent, for the teacher, the professional, the one in charge to come to you and say that. Now, if it's a money-making scam, no. But if you're the only six-year-old in the whole studio that's being asked to do the solo, you do it. You don't go up and ask. Because that's like saying, my 12-year-old can drive. She can drive. I need a driver's license for her. I want Mm -hmm. her to drive. No, because she's going to go out there, can't see over the wheel, and kill people. So don't do it. And that was Paige. Paige should never have been put in the situation to learn a dance in two days and go perform it. She didn't have that kind of brain. Now, I don't know Paige anymore, unfortunately, and that's very sad. She's the kind of kid I thought I would go to her high school graduation party. Mm -hmm. I would be at her bridal shower. You know, I would go to her wedding. I really, truly thought that would be the one kid that I would stay close to. And she didn't have that type of brain. Maybe she's a whiz with a book. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes kids can open a book and read it and they ace the test. Other kids have to be tutored, have to read the chapter 10 times, still get a C on the test. Yeah. You know, so some kids learn are book smart. Other kids physically can watch something and pick it up like that. The ability to comprehend movement quickly is essential for a dancer, period, period. And if you don't have that, don't be a professional dancer. Don't have that dream because you're that's never going to happen. You go to a real audition, you learn a combo, you perform it right there for casting directors. You either are kept or you're asked to leave. It's that fast. Yeah. And I mean, let's say like even she wasn't on the show and she just still, you know, was at the studio, you know, she would have a couple months to learn a routine and it would probably be fabulous. And you had known what every one of those kids did best. And you tried your best Paige to would apply have them. from September to let's say April to work on a routine. And her mother was the only one that sat in that studio. I'm not talking about the moms on the show. I'm Mm. talking about the only mother in the whole entire studio that came every day and had nothing else to do but sit on her ass and watch the kids in that studio. Not just her kid, but the other kids. And would you say that that's because she had gone through your own training herself? So she knew that, oh, I wish that my mom was here or a parent to take notes and you know, maybe help apply that at home. Would you say that that was maybe part of it or you just think that she didn't have it? You genuinely said she doesn't, she didn't have anything to do, but do you think part of it was, you know, her just coming in with her own experience? Like, oh, you know what? I should be here. I should see every I don't know because way. when she danced, back when she danced and it was at the other studio, the parents could watch, but they didn't. You know, the parents that actually stay there and watch are the parents of three, four, five-year-old where the class is 45 minutes or an hour yeah. and you don't have time to leave and go anywhere and come mm-hmm. back. Uh, and we want you to watch. Yes. Yeah. So the kids have to change their shoes and they need help or that type of thing. So I don't think it was that. I think that those kids, especially Brooke, was her life. Mm-hmm. 
was her And that's important. Life. That's important. I went away with them and was in the same room with them, you know, and I was taking Brooke to some title pageant and we would go to a different city because we'd hit it before her birthday. Mm. before she'd change ages and be in the next category. Oh. You know, by the time they came to Pittsburgh, she'd be, let's say, 11. Mm -hmm. But she's 10 now, so let's go now, far away, spend a lot of money, go do this now, because she's still in the 9, 10 age group. Where if we wait till they come to Pittsburgh, now that they've changed a lot of the rules, it's all as of January 1st, but it used to be when they came to your city. Yeah. So we went. She laid in the bed next to her child and did her makeup while she was still asleep. Yeah, she did her kids' makeup. And I, I remember I saw something recently where she was sad that she didn't get to do one of their prom makeup or there was an event and Kelly had said that she was sad that she wasn't there to do her makeup, even now that the kids are older. Like, she was nuts with Brooke. Nuts. Mm. Now, Paige was in a stroller downstairs with my dad or with somebody yeah. holding her, playing with her. So it was... Brook, 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 brook. And then she had a son, and then she had Paige, or vice versa. I don't know. Yeah. And and but it was Brooke. And Brooke had a private a half an hour a week, every week. And Kelly was sneaky snaky and she would sign up last. Kelly was sneaky snaky. She would run down because she was there all the time. So when the private list went up on the wall, she would write her name in it, Brooke Highland, right? She was last because she knew if she was last, I would spend more time with her because oh. nobody was waiting to come in. Oh, that's smart. Okay. And even if I was behind, like if I ran 15, yeah. 20, half an hour over with kids before, she didn't care. Yeah. She'd wait. She'd have her another room running it, running it, running it, running it. Then she would come into me and I would make some changes. And I said, Kelly, why do you keep having privates on this dance? So she said, because you keep changing it. I go, I keep changing it because she knows it. And now she can do more difficult tricks. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding in, I'm taking out maybe easy baby tricks and I'm putting harder things in. But yet she had, I mean, she had more training and tutelage and private one-on-one -on -one counseling with me than any other kid in the studio. And, it, and Kelly was sat inside the room, which was fine, it played the music for me, but it was like Kelly was out there dancing herself. Mm -hmm. And Kelly quit too soon. And Kelly didn't make it as a dancer. And she thought she could have. She was a pretty girl. She could have. And she never had that because she quit. I just have to share my new favorite thing ever. The hard part about always being on the go is not having time to check every little detail before I head out the door. It wasn't until I heard about the You Like laser hair removal device that I realized life can be so much easier. After use of just three to four weeks with consistent treatments, you'll begin to see visible hair growth reduction, becoming thinner and thinner until basically it's gone. It's suitable for sensitive areas, uh, such as above the lip, or the bikini area. It's not recommended for light blonde hair or tattoos. And it's totally painless. Head over to www.youlike.com to try it yourself. You know, if you don't believe me. What's great is that if you don't like it, you can return it within 90 days. So use my code MILLEROFF, M-I-L-L-E-R-O-F-F, -L -L -E at checkout to get a discount on your first purchase. That's www.youlike.com. As far as I know, You Like has cooperated with the PCOS Charities, which is a socially responsible brand. The patented Sapphire ice cooling technology is pain-free, cold feeling, convenient to use at home. I love it. You are going to like it. Youlike.com. There is obviously so much context in just our normal conversations. I hear so much about Abby's relationships with the cast. All the good, all the bad. There's actually a lot more good than you'd expect. You know, I think everybody just thinks that we're doing this podcast just so Abby yeah. can talk bad about all of these people. No, 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 no. And that's not, that's not it, the but point. But it's just life. Everybody has their own interpretations and there is no hate at all mentioned this. This is just what life is, like you just said. So again, you know, we're going to um, go right back into where we were in Pyramid. Uh, so... Let's talk about the competition that you were going to go to for national. So it was the Energy Dance National Invitational. And, you know, you were, you know, you, it was, I don't know if that was made up. It, but. Was, it was made up. And it was an invitational because 
nobody knew about it and nobody was going to come. Gotcha. So they had to get on the phone and call studios and invite them. So in the interview um, where you're talking about what the competition was, you say it's very prestigious. It's, you know, all of this. So all of that was just production. Yes. Okay, cool. Good to know, guys. This is, you know, this is what we're going to unpack. So let's talk about the pyramid. So Paige is at the bottom. She forgot her dance. Nia could have been better with Shake It. And Shake It was such a cute song. Um, it had like a really fabulous wig. It was very like 60s vibe. Um, I just think that, you know, the music that they, you know, guys, keep in mind, Abby did not always pick the music. They, I never they, picked the music. No. So, you they know, they picked if, it. They gave it to me. I said, no, I hate it. And then from Tuesday, we would get the music. Yeah. So Tuesday night, all night long through to Wednesday and all during the pyramid on Wednesday, they were in the back trying to come up with music and Gianna would say, no, she's going to hate it. Nope. She's yeah. Gonna and, and you know, I feel like a lot of people think that you didn't give Nia good numbers on purpose and that just wasn't the reality all the time. And you had to do music that would also work for the kid and their abilities. Well, so you know, the, people say that in, not on a TV show, like in real life. Yeah. When I say real life, I don't mean that that was fake. I just mean, outside of filming a TV show. I don't know how many parents have said, well, you didn't give my daughter the solo. You gave her the better solo. You gave that kid the- like, Prior the, to the, a show. Pri way prior yeah. to the show. And during the show and now after the show. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, you gave her Helen Keller and my daughter's doing, you know, welcome back to Baltimore, hello Baltimore, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like a musical theater piece. Uh, it's what the kid does well and believe me, in my studio, I worked on music forever. I used to drive an hour away, sit at a Blockbuster Music. Oh, wow. Which there I were very never, few stores. Never even knew that was a thing. And sit there with headset on like this. And they would open the CDs for you and put them in and play them. And I'd go like and make a signal with my hand to go next next track. Next Way track, more time next consuming track. than us just heading over to Apple Music or Spotify where you can listen to this podcast and just skipping through, you know, just music so oh, fast. So easy. And this was, yeah. I would go, I'd drive there like 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. I'd get there when they opened 11 or 12 and I they would have to ask me to leave like they were closing. But and, that was the time that you And you, you had to buy in. the whole CD for the one track. Yeah, that and that was the time that you put in for your students. And so. I'd spend a thousand bucks on those Sundays on music for yeah, those kids. Just so, insane. So that is, I tried so hard to find music. And then you're on a TV show, somebody at the network makes a horrible, awful deal with the, rec with the music library where young new artists put up their music for free. Yeah, that's what you had to, to work with. somebody use it. And that's what we have to work with. Then uh, next on the pyramid, you had Chloe. She got sixth with uh, Ghost, which is like a fan favorite, that routine actually. Um, and it just wasn't good enough for her. It's sixth place uh, and uh, it just wasn't good enough for well, you. She was petite Miss Dance of Pennsylvania yeah. or junior Miss Dance of Pennsylvania. Like she I think been, they would agree. I think they would, would agree yeah, it wasn't good for She should have been that. in top three, top four, no yeah. matter what, no matter where we went. Then we got Kendall. Uh, she was sharp, uh, great jazz dancer. It was Kiss Kiss. Fabulous. The costume Love. was adorable with, with the, the big kiss on the oh, front. So good. So that's a fan favorite. We actually, you ended up doing that again in uh, season six or seven with one of the minis, I believe. Or actually, no, it was a group dance that you did with the minis and Kendall helped. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that I just happen to know and all you fans out there know as well. So uh, next on the pyramid. <laughs> yes, a lot, a lot of that. So Jill said that she should have been higher. She should have been higher on the pyramid. It was a breakthrough moment for Kendall because she beat Chloe. And by beat, I don't have the number of what she got in the competition, but she didn't get first place, guys. She beat Chloe, who got sixth, so potentially she got fourth or fifth, maybe even third. But, you know, let's just move on from that. Then we had Brooke. But, but do you um, hear this grown adult yeah. woman, college degree, yeah. her dad was a professor at the university in Pittsburgh, and she is there chanting, yelling, saying, stating this, but she beat Chloe. It's her own teammate that's standing next to her and her mother. Yeah. And she should have been higher because she beat Chloe because she beat, how about she did well? How about it was a breakthrough moment because yes. she hit this turn or because or just she beat kept somebody her that she, stamina up, yes, exactly. but not because you beat the kid standing next to you. That's just rude. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, we don't know about how the interviews were like they may have told her to say that maybe that was part of the narrative of the storyline. She was line saying that, that right out not in her. She wasn't just saying that in her interview. Yeah, it was in the interview she, and in person. She was so, saying yeah, you're it right. right in person when right. we got to the next step with yeah. the, the finals. Yeah, you are right on that. 
Um, I'm, I'm always right, Michael. Always right. So then we had Brooke because she won. She actually won this time. And Abby says she's capable of more. Uh, you she, she was like 14, 15 years old. And I also knew that the way her mother went about her training and the way I ended up training her over and over and over, the same acro routines over and over and over, she couldn't pick up quick because of that private half hour every week instead of, you know what? I'm going to fly into your city. I'm going to teach you a solo in two hours and I'm flying out and it's your responsibility. Yeah. And that's what most 14 year olds do now. You know, either their teacher in their studio is doing it in maybe three lessons, four lessons. It's done. That's it. You don't get that one-on-one -on -one training every single minute. And that's why she was clean. That's why her numbers were adorable and concise. I don't know if you would agree. I feel like we should have seen her do more lyrical and contemporary. Like I know that Acro and her tricks and everything is what she was known for, but I, at least as a viewer who knows nothing about technical dance and how it should look, I feel like she looked good. Like her legs, like everything, like it just always looked like she flowed. She had a beat, like it just worked. So I feel okay, like- Okay, so you know what the answer to that is? Yeah. All right, so in my studio- Okay, okay. Forget the TV show. Yeah. In my studio, there were too many 13, 14, 15 year olds in that age bracket. Yeah. That, you know, 12, 13, or 13, 14, or 15, 16, or 11, 12, that were so much better than her in lyrical. Okay. So, so I had to make sure that at our regular competitions for the studio, and our nationals, that she was in the acro division. Because she would shine in there more yes. versus the other kids. That Where makes a lot of sense. The other kids maybe couldn't do the tricks that she did, yeah. but they could do the ponche on Releve. They okay. could do the développe. They could do the arabesque promenade. They could do the chenegra gotcha. on to the floor, like the typical lyrical stuff better than her, but she could do the acro stuff better than them. So why wouldn't she be in the acro? I had a shot that makes, winning there. You, yeah, you were already doing well. You had people who could yeah, win in the I had people that could win in the other categories. Gotcha, okay, see that, that makes a lot of sense. So then Plus, we- Plus, Michael, acro, acrobatics, gymnastics, tumbling. That's what you is love. It's exciting to watch. Yes. It's entertaining and she makes it look easy. Mm -hmm. So you wanna see that in a show. True, And yeah. when you go to see a professional show, Whatever you're seeing, Cirque, this, that, people do a crazy trick, everybody claps. That's the way it is. And in lyrical, at that time in, in the you know world and the way fads go, everybody was doing turn, second, turn, second, boom, boom, boom. She was not a great turner. Oh, yeah, we never really saw that, yeah. I don't know, I guess that that's a good point. Mackenzie was actually second on the pyramid, even though she forgot the dance before, but she still scored high. So I don't know if that was production, you know, you probably don't remember at this point. The pyramid to me was like an avalanche, and it just was crumbling. And it was just took the most time, and everybody knows, because you, you've talked about it a lot, how just it took four hours to do, but then- And I knew what I had to accomplish yeah. that evening. And the moms, what did they have to do? Uh, sit on their asses and sometimes, talk about me. And yeah, that, and then sometimes make the costumes. Sometimes, sometimes. I know that Kelly was they sewing trimmed a lot. And rhinestone, and she had to trim stuff and take it in because her kid was short. Is it true that you at one She had one, one skinny point, kid and one short kid, so she had to take stuff in like the the width of it. Gotcha. So a waist, lot of adjustments. Hips, adjustments, and then on the other one, she had to take all the straps and stuff down because it was she was too short. Is it true that? you at one point wanted her to be a seamstress or work in costuming for your studio. Is that true? Probably in the rhinestone department. Okay. Trimming stuff. Yeah. Anything to get her from upstairs watching. To being productive. Out of the way. And doing something, gotcha. And doing something. Okay. So then we had Maddie on the top, obviously. You know, same old, same old. But uh, so Christy says that Abby had already decided Maddie is her national winner. Um, and then you, you know, figure that's the same story in a different day. But you said that you, you're announcing the group dance and you announced it as my last text instead of the last text, which is the one of your favorite and one of the fan favorite iconic group dances that you okay, did on so the show. Okay, so they wanted it to be my last text and somebody was probably holding up a sign behind the camera mm -hmm. saying my last text and they would hold up what city we were going so to. So there were cue cards. And where the competition was. Just for those three things, the okay. title, the city, the name of the competition, and little known fact, we didn't know where we were going all the time. Oh. So I had to shoot that 
with three different titles of a competition and three different cities. You see, this is, this bum, you heard bum, it. Bum, there you, you go. You heard it here first on Leave It On The Dance Floor. That is something that we have never heard. I've been with you at how many events, how many Q and A's, never heard that before. You never asked me. No, no, so, so there we go. There were cue cards because it was three different competitions like uh, blah, 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 and star crap, right? Yeah. So we had, they would hold up one with the city with the name of the competition and I and then the name of the routine. So the name of the routine, I probably just said the last text, my last text, our last text. I probably just did it different yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. And the editing screwed up and had me saying it my last text, but, but I that, probably said it different ways. I think that it was originally supposed to be my last text because a couple interviews, I think Chloe did an interview and she had said that, you know, so Abby says that the group dance is called my last text. So I think that it actually was my maybe going to be, and then you fought for it to be the last. So I'm sure I had um, a fight for something that week. As always. So Maddie, Mackenzie, and Brooke have solos uh, this week. And then Nia, Kendall, and Chloe had to learn the same combination, uh, which was to silence and see who would be dancing at nationals. So That was you, production. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you put kids against each other all the time, but you just wouldn't have wasted the time. You would have been like, you're doing the dance. I think that you probably would have just picked Chloe right off the bat. And It would know, have been Chloe or Kendall. Yeah, but I think as far as, you know, just at that time, I think you were probably going to pick Chloe. And because remember, Jill had left and went to Candy Apples and she was still kind of redeeming herself in your eyes. I know that that was production. We'll get into that once we unpack that episode. Yeah. And whatever Melissa was going on with her and and Christy at the time. Yeah. You know, Melissa was loaning Christy money to build her house or I don't think that happened yet. I think that was years later. But like all this like, you know, drama, internal stuff was going on in the studio. Mm. And, you know, that's why people always, oh, you don't like Chloe, you don't like Chloe. Not true. I just, you know, you can't cause all this ruckus in my studio and not pay your bills and not do this and not do that when, and then expect me to like fawn all over your kid. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. And you told her, you said, I could see you being a rock at one day. You said all of these things, you know, you really oh, wanted. Oh, no, 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 no. The kid was no problem. Uh, Jill thinks that it's ridiculous, uh, because Kendall beat Chloe and you said that they're not your friends, they're your competitors. So obviously that was you kind of getting in their heads and making them want to work hard. So, well, probably I was trying to make Chloe realize that it's not given to you. You have to work for it. Yeah. Yeah. And And she, and she did work hard. She just wasn't, you know, Gianna and I laugh because she never, ever, 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 ever once did the dance we taught her. Never once. Hmm. She did something else. As a choreographer, as a dance teacher, would you rather, let's maybe do like a would you rather here. Would you rather a kid forget a dance and run off the stage? Or would you rather them stay on the stage and do it, you know, not improv necessarily, but still, you see, because here's my thing. You can answer your own question. Because you'd rather her stay on the the stage. stage they shouldn't go to dancing school. They should play yes. soccer and they can run all over the so place. So she would forget her numbers and then she would do her own thing. And, you know, that's fine. Not fine, actually. That's, you know, just what the situation was. Would you have rather her forgotten and not done her own thing? Or would you have... No, no, no. She, you forget. You And you keep going. Up, you keep going. No question about it. You, that's what you but do. But it just so happened to me a lot of times that that would probably a, go A lot off. of yeah. times. And okay. it was like, and then... I think her mother and her, they'd wonder why she didn't win. Well, because let's say there's a beautiful double attitude turn. That she forgot. In the, no, in the beginning of the dance. And she'd worked on it, worked on it. We got it. It was great. And then the choreography at the end of the dance, she would forget. So she would revert back to that double attitude turn that was beautiful and do it again. Well, you don't do it twice in the same number. So yeah. when a kid goes to improv or they make something up because they forgot, they do something that they already did in the dance. Okay. And it's like, well, we already saw that. Why is the choreographer putting that in again? So she made us look bad by not doing what she was given. Gotcha. Period. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So had it been like once in a while and it was a fluke, then okay. But right. because it was, was an ongoing I thought that thing. she was too old, too be making talented, and had too much training to be screwing up like that. And that was the mother. That was the mother making the kid nuts. And that makes a lot more sense. Right. So let's talk about this car seat because we go into the rehearsal and like this car seat, where do you I even go, rem- I have to go back to the couch with Paige for one, one we can pick this up. Yeah. And 
production never had the couch there for her to practice with. Oh. Until late in the game. Gotcha. Like she probably got to practice with that sofa two or three times. Mm. The dance part at the beginning. And sometimes that was intentional. The producers would do that. Absolutely. It was intentional. And that's cruel to a little girl. If the little girl has every single thing lined up, the stars are aligned. Everybody did their job. The costume was gorgeous. The sofa was right. It was there on time when we first started the dance Mm -hmm. at the very beginning. She wasn't marking it like on a mat or something. And the choreographer, we were there and the music was cut and right. If all that was right, then she forgets and runs off the stage. That's all on her. But when you have people against you, working against you, and you're nine years old, that's just cruel. Yeah. And that was not us. No. And and it's unfortunate that a lot of that stuff ended up going down. So back to the car seat for the national dance. Do you even know where you got that car seat? Like, was that just a prop that they picked up for you? Did you have to buy it? Did you bring it from Pittsburgh? No, I didn't bring it from Pittsburgh. I didn't buy it. They went and got that late in the game. Because you see us using the mats, the acrobatic mats. And we're holding one panel of the mat up to be like the back of the seat. True. Right. Okay, so. Again, had the car seat been there at the beginning, it would have been faster to get the choreography done. Mm -hmm. So you say that Paige is beautiful to look at and has the most important part because she's the driver of this Dance. She was the driver and she, at the end, she's dead. When the car, on impact, mm-hmm. she's dead. Uh, so you don't know she's dead until Maddie goes to shake her like, why are you frozen here? And then her head rolls to the side that she broke her neck yeah. when the car hit. What the chin stand and all that was in the middle, I don't know. That was probably to shut her mother up. I would have rather her had just nothing and she just sat there. Not because she couldn't do anything, but because when the driver of the car, you know, many times there's fatal fatalities in an accident, a fatal accident. Upon impact. Upon impact. But the driver walks away and mm-hmm. everybody else in the car yeah. dies. So that you switched it up. Well, I just wanted to make it that we didn't realize that she was dead until the very end. She was frozen, like in yeah. shock, but she was actually, and gone. this is something that you and I have spoken about this past year. And I never knew this like as a viewer. So I just think that maybe the way that it was filmed, maybe you had to be there. You know, I know that it was really impactful when you were there. So I think that that was something that the fans may not know until listening to this. So I think that I'm really happy that you clarified that. So you said that you couldn't get the music with the crash because it was wrong or they, uh, they didn't have the music for you and you kept doing beats on the crash and it wasn't working out in the rehearsals. I think you said when we were watching. The crash was wrong because the music wasn't cut with the sound effects mm. fast enough for us to choreograph. Yeah. Like our choreography was ahead. So what Abby Lee Miller does, <clears throat> speaking of my two terms, what happened was I just have to choreograph the routine. Mm-hmm. So the choreography was set now you have to get the music to match the steps when it's better, uh, always better to have the music cut and then you choreograph to the music. But I couldn't do that. I couldn't wait for them. So I had to just go through it, do it. And then we had to make the music work and it just wasn't working. It was wasting a lot of time. Yeah. Which a lot of things were wasting time. But anyway, uh, you had told her, <laughs> I, I liked how you said, sit up page, you know, you haven't even started dancing yet. And she ended up not really dancing. You know, which, which, you know, hey, maybe you were still making the number and you, you know, were not really there yet because clearly that, that just shows that you probably intended for her to do more because everybody had a problem with that she wasn't doing enough. So Holly uh, was confident that. I just think it's sad that. Automatically they think the worst. No, no, no. I think it's sad that a mother is outside crying because her kid's not doing anything. Why would you want your child, this goes back to the solo thing, why do you want your kid to be the one to screw up the number? Why yeah. do you want your kid to be the one that's off the music? Why do you want your kid to be the one that forgets? Yeah. Why not play it safe and say, hey, my, if this new number loses, it wasn't my kid's fault because all she did was sit there. And it was a TV show. They weren't paying the competition fees. They were getting flown out. They didn't have to really like do go to any expenses to really complain. But they were hey. getting paid. Yeah, like they were all getting paid to be on a television show. So, yes. But but in reality, if it was, what do we call that? In real life, not on a TV show, 
wouldn't you rather your kid be the one that's perfect in the dance? Yeah. Instead of the one that Mackenzie's supposed to fly out of the car and round off back handspring and whatever to the floor and she misses it mm. or her hands get caught on her dress and she falls on her head. And she had the prettiest outfit you said, Paige. Like Beautiful said, dress with yeah. that little the yeah. ruffle at the top. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, I would, you know, everybody wants to be in the front, in the middle. Again, parents that are watching, people that are listening, to have your kid in the front in the middle puts the responsibility on your child to keep the musicality perfect, to keep the technique, uh, you know, everything, the alignment, the flexibility, the, the where they're spotting their turns. Everything is falling on your kid. They're the quarterback. They're the quarterback mm -hmm. that you lose. Yeah. It's the quarterback's fault. So, again, why not be grateful? Oh, my God. Thank God Paige doesn't have anything to do in this dance. That Abby can't blame the loss on her. Done. Period. No, you're outside boohooing because your kid's not doing anything? Stupid. Yeah. And, you know, she had two kids that were on the team, you know. And the other was, one was doing lots of stuff. The other stuff was doing great stuff. So, yes, you know, obviously every child is different. You know, we know. But I just think that it's interesting talking about think, it now. Yeah. And I think her words, her emotion, her outbursts made Paige feel bad about herself. And obviously probably caused more tension with you and her relationship. You're in her relationship, you know, just, you know, yes, she might have reacted, you know, to you, you know, uh, reprimanding her and, you know, giving critiques, but her mother, you know, reacting definitely did not help that, did not help the child trust you. Are you talking about when I you. said you have to go to the pediatrician? We're going to get to that. Uh, absolutely. Okay, but I mean, if you want, you can kind of tackle well, that now. Well, I think when I said that. Yeah. It was, was that about was, something else? No, 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 no. It was with the intent that the doctor, a pediatrician, because I went to the same pediatrician until I was 22, mm -hmm. from six weeks old, or whenever you go to your mm -hmm. first checkup, 22 years. That doctor would have told Kelly, butt out, leave the kid alone. You are doing this to your child. You are expecting way too much. She's a sweet, nice little girl. Don't expect her to do these dances. That's not the kind of kid she is. But I mean just the mother butting out of the kid's life. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a kid, a, what is the saying? You have to give a kid a little rope or they'll skip. Mm. And when parents don't teach their children to be independent, when you don't trust your kid, those are the kids that are sneaking out of the window, out of the house to go to the party. When you let your kid go to the party and you trust them, and they screw up, they get in trouble, they're punished. Yeah. But you have to give them a little trust. And she didn't do that. She was that helicopter mother that it was like her life, like her feelings were hurt because Paige wasn't doing anything. And she said that she took it personally, you know, at least now she says that, you know, she took all of the things you said to her kids personally because of your relationship prior, because you knew each other for so long. So, you know, because I know you, I would say, okay, well, she's being hard on them because she's close to you guys. Like, because she's known you the longest, that's why she's being so honest with your kids. I just, I've gone to doctors of kids before. Uh -huh. Kids that, well, one kid in my studio that was anorexic. Only one in all the years, 35 years. And I knew her pediatrician and I contacted him and I called him and I said, this isn't Paige, this is not No, no, Paige. nothing to do with Paige. Uh, and I called him and I said, look, there's a problem and we can't let her dance anymore. She's too frail. And that She's was you stepping take. in and hey, you could have been a business owner that's like, oh, I don't care. I don't care if the kid gets paid. They signed up, they signed a release form. I'm not liable. I'll just oh, take their money. she gets hurt? I don't care if she gets hurt? Oh, no, we, yeah. we wouldn't let her take no. acrobatics. We wouldn't let her take no. gymnastics. Yeah, you're the not that kind teacher, of teacher. The top teacher didn't even want her in class because if she fell on the floor, she was gonna break her bones. So. That you know, she would have like brittle bone disease or something. And I contacted the the pediatrician. The next day, the mother came in. Furious. Furious, smoke coming out of her face, demanded to see me immediately in my office. And how dare you contact our pediatrician? One could say that technically you aren't the kid's parent, so it's not your place. However, you cared enough. Well, and as a you teacher and an educator, I went to the doctor to say the next time you see her, the next time she's in the office, mm -hmm. you need to have a serious look at and her. And then that was taken out of proportion. You know, word of mouth, the doctor told, said that the dance teacher called, the mother didn't hear exactly well, what you said. So of course she's gonna be, you know, coming. Interestingly in. enough, yeah. how I knew the doctor was because he had a kid that danced. 
oh. at another studio. Okay, so there was and already they competed yeah. against us. So for people listening, this is why Abby made the comment to go to the pediatrician and find out what's wrong because she knew that it wasn't anything to do with that. No. She was just tall and thin. It wasn't that. Please no. don't. No, 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 no. It was that I was hoping that the doctor would tell the mother to butt out, to butt out. So Holly was confident that you did not want me to have that solo. And I think that the fans, you, me, I think we all agree that silence. And I think Holly even says later in the episode, that solo was not meant for Nia. Love Nia. She's great at other styles. That was just not one that was going to work for her. So then after that, uh, Jill says that the week before Abby drew the line when, you know, and Kendall had beat her, you had said that, you know, whoever wins this gets mm-hmm. a solo at nationals. However, that was not the case because like you said, what production wanted there to be like a little, you know, everybody's going to go against each other. for well, the yeah, solo. But Let's think about it positively. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm a teacher. Are we going to have, we had how many kids who, so Paige wasn't doing a solo. Nia, Kendall, right? Mm-hmm. Are they all going to sit on their ass and do nothing this whole week? You see Kendall playing a video game. Exactly. Like that's valuable in itself. Just having the kids learn so the choreography. three of them all learn it, yeah. at least they're up doing a new jump, and a new leap, a new trick, something. And if somebody gets injured. We're, there we go. We're ready. There you go. Let's talk about so, some, when's the, when's the New Orleans, the, the New Orleans nationals coming in when we kept. We, yeah. It was, this kid's out. That kid's out. This one's in. This one's out. Oh, it was like insane. That was a crazy week. That we'll definitely unpack on this that podcast. That was a great number too. Yeah. Paige does not end up dancing at all. Kelly says that she's that you're doing it to be a mean person. So we've already talked about this. You explained why. Then Paige says herself that she wishes that she was dancing because it was nationals. You've explained this yourself. I'm just I recapping the episode. I, yeah, I don't really think that was honest. I don't. Well, that I'm kid sure was that so producers... Glad that kid was so glad that the pressure wasn't on her to execute something that she wasn't feeling that she was capable of doing. Yeah, and I'm referring to in the interview when she said that she wished that she was dancing because it was nationals. But keep in mind, guys, before season eight, the kids were in the like interviews without the moms. Like season eight, like from what I saw, the kids and the moms were interviewed together. There was not any private time. Maybe there was, but oh, they didn't, I didn't show. Even know that. From a viewer, you do not see the kids talking by themselves as much, unless oh. it's like uh, on the fly. Oh, unless it's like at the competitions. That's what I noticed in season eight. So Paige asks you, you know, like, will I have choreography? And you said that you didn't know because she forgot the dance the week before. So you'll see. Then uh, Christy plays dance teacher. And does a little private choreography uh, cleaning or rehearsal I, with Chloe. I, I don't. I saw Jill doing it too. So I yeah, think no, that they, they were they, all given time. They probably were all given time in they, that they studio, were, yeah. or maybe there was two spaces there. By the way, guys, Abby, well, no, you were sh- you were saying that um, the building was not where you actually no, rehearsed. I don't think so. And why was it blurred out then? Like they kept showing it, and it was blurred out. Oh, the editing is so horrendous. Yeah. Why would you use the same shot? of a filthy, dirty old building. Which name you can't even use. Which, which the name you can't even use. Like, yeah. It's not like we were at the Beverly Hills Hotel or at, on Rodeo Drive and you yeah. wanted to show that shot of Los Angeles. No. And I was surprised, well, not surprised actually, but you know, when Christy was working with Chloe, she was very hard on her because she wanted that kid to have that solo that in her mind she deserved. And I think that I think you know, she was tougher on that kid than I've ever been. At In that moment, because she said, and I'm quoting, you're not pecking, you're not pooping, straighten your knees. And she was kind of loud. At one point, she was like, Chloe. You know, so, I, you know, the moms, like you said, were just so heavily invested in proving you wrong. Kelly says that the girls need to step it up because Kathy's coming. Then uh, Mackenzie... Yeah. Kelly says the girls need to step it up. I know, I know. And I Kelly found that amazing. Kelly says that Maddie needs to step it up. Like, that's yeah. so funny because of Kathy. So, Mackenzie is doing Honeybee, which was Mc- uh, Vivi's solo. That Still cute music. Such a cute song. Still age appropriate. I- iconic music. Not for Mackenzie's version, but Vivi's version. Um, and <laughs> you said it was more like a killer bee because you want her to sting the competition. There were a lot of bee puns. Well, I like, I, okay, so. A lot of bee puns. Were they giving you these puns? No. Okay. ALDC facts. I've done a lot of B dances. Okay. There's a beautiful. Oh, I shouldn't give it away. There's a beautiful piece of music that a very famous singer does that I haven't used in a long mm. time. It's beautiful. The kids' B costume 
that we borrowed, Amanda Pampina. We borrowed her bee costume, very expensive, like at that time, maybe $350, $400 mm-hmm. bee costume for Vivi to wear was this amazing acrobat and she used this song and I haven't used it since then and I'm going to use it coming up soon. It is for a new solo that I'm doing. And you did um, a B number with some of the minis later on. which And I, I did a big B dance in my studio though. Uh-huh. Killer Bees. It was advanced acrobatics. They were little. You had to be, I guess, under 10, but you had to have your back handspring, your back tuck, your aerial, your, your side aerial, aerial walkover. And they were amazing. And it was to the the killer bee uh, instrumental, a very classical piece of music. And you said that you hope that Vivi isn't allergic to bees if she's backstage with Mackenzie because she's gonna sting, sting, sting. Um, yes, and uh, then- Vivi will just like blow up. Yes. Yeah. Then you had said, you think that Kathy wants to be a member of the ALDC based on how many times she's coming to the same competitions as you. Also come went on, on- Come on, how about Kathy's face during the last text? Well, she said that she was moved. You said that you're really confident in your solos, but you really want the group to win because this was only season two at this point. You were in LA, you were on TV. So, I mean, I'm sure that this Nationals was super important to you. I've had a lot of soloists win throughout the years. I've had Miss Dance of America, Teen Miss Dance of America, Junior Miss Dance of America, mm-hmm. get you. Oh, Maddie was petite Miss Dance of Pennsylvania, but she didn't win Miss Dance of America because she was first in talent on stage. First in the classes, all four classes, tap, jazz, ballet, and acrobatics, first, 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 and 13th in interview. So she ended up second, the first to lose. Can you believe it? There you go, guys. See, even Maddie See, got she second didn't, sometimes. She didn't know how to interview, but now she does because I trained her. Yeah. All right, so moving away from that, back to the point at hand. I've had a lot of soloists. So I've had Mr. Dance of America, uh, Junior Mr. Dance of America, Team Okay, so, other studios have these big, massive groups that win. Mm-hmm. It's about the group. And my groups that have won have been a small group, like five, seven amazing dancers. Those top soloists all coming together to do a small group. So I always emulated and aspired to be some of the teachers in the competition world that I knew from Minnesota, Michelle mm-hmm. Larkin, from Arizona, from New York, that had these groups that won. And so I just always felt stronger about the group winning says more than a solo winning. Absolutely. And especially being on TV, it definitely adds some pressure. Yes. So in this, when we were watching last night and yes, guys, we we did watch the show together last night because we are staying together right now. So for those of you, yeah. So for those of you who, uh, and I had to go back and watch last week's. So help me Todd. And uh, I know, he kept I, interrupting I, me. I, I was like, we gotta watch. So uh, yeah, so I watched Dance Moms with Abby Lee Miller and not many people got to say that. So I'm reveling in it right now. And uh, she hated every moment. <laughs> I hated every moment every of moment. my horrible hair, my sweating face. So Kelly goes on and says that she can't even look at Paige because Paige is thinking, wow, Miss Abby must really hate me if I'm doing nothing in this dance. See, who says that in front of their child? You, you, you don't explained. say that out loud and let your child hear it. Yeah. This is fabulous. You get to take it easy this week. No pressure, honey. Enjoy it. Have fun at nationals. And she ended up doing That's a photo what a shoot. parent says. She ended up doing a photo shoot. But at the same time, you know, like she still had something to show for it. This happened after all this drama. Like she got the call from, you know, whoever. But anyway, I'm going to not trying to jump around, guys. And thank yeah, you for any, still any, being I on. Mean, anyone that works in L.A. and knows the business in L.A., uh, they don't dress kids up for advertising. Like an agency doesn't book a kid Mm -hmm. for a job for Old Navy or The Gap or whatever, a dancer for a job, and they dress them up like that. They -hmm. want them to just look like little kids that are normal little kids. During the photo shoot you're talking about when Paige went. Yeah, you want that natural, all American, just normal You're right, you're right. You don't do it. They always say tone it down, no makeup. That's usually what they say. The shoot that they did was like a, uh, like a, uh, like a magazine editorial type of thing. Maddie used to do them all the time yeah. where they want this certain look and they're using this certain lens and they're doing this certain set and scene because it goes with the magazine's theme that week. Yeah. So that would have made sense for Paige. But just to do pictures of her like that was just all a con game for the kid. But 
I mean, she's a beautiful girl. She should have been doing pictures all the time. She looked happy, and the pictures ended up coming out really cute, I thought. But she should have been doing that stuff, not forced to learn a dance routine in two days. Yes, yes. And that's why, you know. A photo shoot once a month, fun, be in a magazine, do ads, get paid for it. That's what the child should have been doing. And you, in your next project, are going to be focusing more about the fun projects that the kids should be doing, you know, being in L.A., you know, going out on modeling shoots and doing more of the fun stuff that You're talking about month. season nine? I am. I'm talking about well, season nine. Well, it's not all fun. Well, it's not all going to be fun, but you're going to be just kind of doing you know, it in a different way. You know, it's all fun, fun, fun until Abby takes your T-shirt away. Yeah. Did you and get that? You don't know that sound? No, I don't. Fun, fun. It's it's the Twitter daddy takes your T-bird away. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, t-shirt, gotcha. T-shirt, T-bird, T-shirt. I, I, there's so many references, guys. And, you know, I'm not the best with references, but I'll tell you, Abby is a, not only with terminology with dance, but she is an encyclopedia. Uh, she's she's a series. She's like that set. <laughs> she's like an ex- encyclopedia series. Kids, no, you don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about when the guy comes to, the, to sell the encyclopedia. Yeah, the sets. So that, that, well, yeah, there's letters. The volume is volumes. There That's what go. it was. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. The kids don't know what that is. Anymore. Anyway, those of you who are still on, thank you for listening. I am, you know, a lot of people tell me, are you, you know, planning on making these short, long? We are being transparent. We are doing the full amount, uh, whether you want to listen to it, whether you want to skip it around. This is what it's going to be. This is what it's going to be. We're, you know, not making many My cuts. My awful voice in your ear for all this time. And that's just it. But I, you know what? I, I really hope you're being don't productive. like. I hope they're doing laundry yeah. or driving, driving. or, or not sitting inside your dance studio, maybe out in your car, yeah. balancing your checkbook, something. Well, because here's the thing. As your creative and social media manager... Do you have checkbooks anymore? Do you balance your checkbooks? I have no. I do okay. not. So as somebody who works with your social media and really reads everything, I lividly hate when people take sound bites of you without the full context. So I don't really care how long these podcasts end up going. This was created... I'm sure that I'm sure the guy that owns the company does. Hey, listen, whatever. That's that's totally fine. There, you know, the the, oh, the person that that owns yeah, yeah. the building right now. <laughs> yeah, we were a little bit late today, but um, I am keeping everything in full because I want full transparency. And you know, that way, if you people, you know, y- you have the full story here. So that's why we're leaving it I on the know. dance floor. Have we ever finished a story today? I feel like we just keep jumping around. Well, no, we keep jumping around, but this is all in context. And we're going through the episode, believe it or not. Is that Bethany Frankel friend, you know, she uh, jumps around and I can't understand a word she's saying. No, yeah, I mean, it's nice and it's great for people who are like super fans and stuff, but, and she also doesn't watch all the time. I do like her makeup stuff where she says like the cheap stuff and she she reviews it. I, I learn a lot from that. Well, because she's a real person without any training. That's the best part of it. And that's why I'm trying to kind what of What do you mean base... training? No makeup training? Well, no makeup experience, rather, where she w- oh. she was getting her makeup done, you know, being on television all the time. Like, she, she's not like you, where you're able to do a full face of makeup in the car on the way here kind of thing. Yeah, while well, <laughs> I'm know? driving. Well, yes. Yeah. And okay. anyway, so we're moving on, guys. We're back to the episode. So uh, Brooke is rehearsing the Dyer Van Frank. One of my, I think this is my favorite number that she's ever done. No. Okay. Least, okay, that's you're allowed to have your own favorite. Yeah, no, me you know, personally. You, if that's your favorite fun. I wish you could have seen the kid that originally did it. That originally did mm-hmm. the first time I did it. And ah, what was her name? Stephanie Schlerman. Yes. So Woo! her mom was a psycho. Her mom and dad were freaking nuts. <laughs> I guess that's how. And it the always other kids is. in the dance competition in the in the, her group, the parents. Tried to play tricks on them. They called the police on them. They mm-hmm. did a lot of things. They were swatted. It was crazy. They, uh, yeah, yeah. She did not make it through to her senior year and graduate at the studio. She turned a little too crazy. She had to be medicated and stuff. She was nuts. But she was good. And her feet were like, Whoa. she had redhead freckles. Mm. And so, man, her facial expressions were, you think about the Maddie face? Uh-huh. Woo, the Steffi face, she was a brilliant dancer. And just, you know, Abby's done a lot of reactions on her YouTube channel, so you're able to go over to the YouTube and watch a lot more where she's actually reacting to the dances as she watches them. Right now we're doing more of like recap kind of style stuff. So if if Stephanie Schlarman did the Diary of Anne Frank at, uh, she received a 99, mm-hmm. okay? And Brooke came out after her 
and did her, the version I taught her, the Die of Anne Frank, more acro, less lyrical, it would have been like a 39. If Steffi was a 99, what you saw on the show that you loved would have been a 39. Really? Yes. Okay. And for those of you who don't know, 39, explain that. No, like just out of, of 100 out points. Out of 100, gotcha. Out of 100 points, if one kid that I taught did the number was a 99, then what I taught Brooke doing that same number uh -huh. would have been like a 39. Okay. But yet you loved it because yes. you didn't see the 99. You're right. right. You had said to her, if you dance the way that I taught you, you'll win. It's your face because that's the one thing that she lacked. Then we move on to Maddie uh, doing Telling Myself. Not my favorite number that she's done. I mean, it's she's always beautiful when she's dancing, but I just feel like that one kind of not really memorable. Well, there was no gimmick. There was yeah. no theme. There was no character to tell a story. Yeah. It was just lyrical music. And that's the one. And she said that she, she could have done Diary of Frank as a lyrical. Yeah. And she said that she wanted to win. She wants it. Kelly whispers to Paige saying, or excuse me, Kelly is actually in with the moms. That's the only real time, maybe one out of three times that the moms were watching a rehearsal in the room. I don't know why that happened. Because the studio we were in. Oh, the space. Yep. Or you know what it was also? They probably didn't have a TV. Do you remember in LA later on, they actually had a, a monitor for the moms to watch the rehearsal so they can go in and scream at you? Well, they would have had to rent that. So they, they, they couldn't watch. Right. That's why they were in there. So Kelly whispers to the mom saying, Paige has been sitting there doing nothing. You jump back real quick and you're like, Maddie, you know, it's so rough, you know, when you're, you know, trying to rehearse and moms are over there ripping on you. Oh, actually, I have it written here that you were wearing your green and black uh, Abby Lee suit like sweatsuit like it was like a green and black outfit that was actually in the auction okay for, for the studio so right. for so i would like if anybody's listening to this if you got it take a picture of yourself tag leave it on the dance floor podcast the real abby lee and uh i want to see it because i for I me like and for fans like it was like that, green on the bottom and black on the top yeah yes or vice versa yeah. but yeah. like that and you had another one that was blue and same black outfit. and then white from and the black. same store yeah that's why they should have just sponsored me yeah you know it's interesting but dumb, you always dumb, dumb. yeah i just had that written which i liked but then that's where you make the pediatrician comment we already unpacked that yes then tantrum of 40 something year old is ridiculous kelly is sobbing like actually sobbing this is like one of the worst uh tantrums you know but upsetting how, when your child looks at you and you're behaving like that you're the role model you're mm -hmm. the mother like it, it you should keep it together yeah and you should say not we're out of here we're leaving so when the, her two children are grown and they're at a job and they can't handle it and it mm. gets too hot in the kitchen are they just going to get up and go we're leaving we can't handle it so and, you know turn into drunks like her i mean come on yeah and you had or excuse me she said that's that part of the problem i think i think she had been drinking so or yeah come out that's like true that. cuz i mean they've they've said publicly that they were drinking the a lot of the times while filming some of them some of them not yes. all of them and some yes. of them were smarter not to be drinking yes. uh, a lot more calculated so at one point kelly says has she done one thing that makes her think that she wants her here i can't take it and then you had told me last night she we can't were, take it the kids are still sitting in there yeah you had told me that you or excuse me i don't know if i think you said this to me last night that you never said stupid you never stupid did not come out of your mouth no. You never said that no, Paige no, no. was stupid, at least not no. in this scene that we're referring to. So No, I've never said that. No. And um, Kelly got a call right after that, you know, crazy thing about the photo shoot, which we also just talk, spoke about. Yeah, I mean, um, how are you? You're hysterical crying. Everything's going wrong. Your kid's sitting there, da 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 And, oh, the phone rings, and your kid's hired for a photo shoot. And she couldn't even speak to them because she was so distraught still no and she it, couldn't speak to them because she didn't know who it was calling her because yeah. there was ever any meeting or everything yeah. where she submitted her stuff to previous to that gotcha. and she was didn't know the story to be able to carry it off on camera yeah. so she had to have them call and her i back. feel like i feel like at least in my there life 50 people going call them back call them back call them back yeah. behind the cameras I'm sure that, you know, a lot of people can relate. In my life, sometimes when horrible things are going on and I am just screaming, I'm mad, I'm upset, all of a sudden, I'll get an opportunity handed my way. And I'll get a text message or a beautiful, just even like a compliment, you know, and just, I feel like a lot of times, like at least my therapist reminds me, you have to take a beat. You have a therapist? I do have a therapist. It's very, like, I, it's not like I have issues or anything like that, but I think that I've a lot of people- i seven years? 
Yeah, and I, I had a therapist that whole time. Yeah. Yeah. I well anyway. Micro, I'm like you're my shocked. mouth is. Um, yeah. I'm, well, that's yeah. good. I'm happy that you're shocked. Maybe that means that you wouldn't think that I need one. My therapist r- reminds me that you have to just take a beat because if you take that second to just think of one positive thing in your life, and Kelly, like while she's screaming and crying, could have thought, my children are here in LA. They have been here a handful of times in their life. We're on a television show. Yes, things are going crazy right now, but let's take a minute. I'm making money, quote, I can quote her husband. I'm quoting her husband. Bags of money, just bags and bags of money, cash. I bring home bags of cash. My wife bring home. My wife benefits. brings home. Yeah. My wife brings home. Perks, benefits, things so, to be grateful for for so, being on a reality show. So, or should you really be here? Should your yeah. kids really be doing Well, this? I think that was going through her mind as well. And then, you know, obviously she signed this, not the same contract that you did. The moms had a separate contract as you. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. That's good to know. So she was under contract too. So she technically She was. Leave. The children were not. Yeah. But- Oh yeah, interesting. The children were not. Yeah, you and I have spoken about that, where the kids technically could have gotten out of it, but the moms did, couldn't. Like the kids didn't. Well, have anybody the can get out of anything, but at yeah. this point, by season, by the end of season two A or two B, whatever this was, uh, yeah, the kids could have walked, no problem. There is nobody. There is. N- <laughs> There's not a producer, a, a network, anybody production company that's going to hold a child Hmm. to any type of piece of paper that's set because of mental health issues. Nobody. So, but the kids did not have a contract. We'll talk about that. Yeah. We'll get into that later on. Then in an interview page says that Abby makes her feel bad that she's not a good enough dancer. Boom. Boom. There it is. Boom. There are dancers that go to class once a week, twice a week. They're in a recital. There's dancers that go to class. They're on a competition team. They go to some Dolly Dinkle competitions that come their way in their Mm. town. There's kids that fly every weekend all over the country doing solos. Then with their dance competition teams, they go to School of American Ballet over the summer or Joffrey program over the summer. They're there all summer long dancing six, seven hours a day. There's those kids. Paige was not that kid. Mm. shouldn't have been on a TV show dancing every week, period. But End she did discussion. She did end up saying that she would love to model when she gets older, and that's and something that- And I thought that, she should have too. I yeah. had her modeling. Who put her in, got the connection, who hooked her up, got her the job modeling for a costume company, CC's? Yeah. I did all that. Yeah, and a lot of those can be seen in the- uh, uh, program books that you had yes. a lot of them, which some people have from the auction as well. Your, your dance teachers probably have those mm-hmm. costume catalogs that were sent yeah. to them and Brooks in them, pages in them, Maddie's in them. They're, they're in them. And you did that for the kids. You, Absolutely. you yeah. Millions of kids go to bed hungry each night in the U S. So when I found out about a nonprofit that feeds 5,000, underserved children each night named Katarina's Club, headed by Chef Bruno Serrato. I knew I had to help. After all, who knows kids better than me? He launched Katarina's Club when he found out about California's motel kids. These children are so poor that their entire families live in single room motels with no kitchens, nowhere to cook, no dinner. So food was a rarity for many of these families. He has been feeding kids, 5,000 kids, every single night since 2005. He even mortgaged his home twice to keep the program going. When his restaurant, Anaheim White House, burned to the ground, he found another kitchen that same day to keep feeding kids without interruption. He has served well over 10 million meals. During COVID, the number of hungry kids grew, leaving Katarina's Club scrambling to keep up with the demand. We are looking for any size donations. After all, a $5 donation feeds a family of four. While food banks are helping ease the crisis, many of these children, often referred to as motel kids, live in cheap, crime-ridden units that do not contain kitchens. Since these families are unable to cook dinner, They depend on already prepared meals like those provided by Katarina's Club. To become involved and make a donation, go to katarinasclub.org backslash donate. Again, that's 
katarinasclub.org backslash donate. And Jill, later on, we, we know we see the photo shoot, super cute. We love it. Um, Jill says that Chloe gets everything she wants because you know Christy's always complaining that Chloe should have more. Chloe should have more. But at the time, Chloe was still getting a lot of solos. So Jill had, you know, Jill Jill was fighting for Kendall. So she she had a lot to say when Pete, when Christy would complain, which I, I just found think interesting. That Jill should have stopped worrying about Kendall and worry about her bra straps that were hanging out in in the interview, right? She was her, sitting her, on the floor. Yeah. It was oh. when she had her when solo, she was doing the the private. rehearsal with yeah. uh, Kendall, yeah. and her bra straps were hanging out. And there's mirrors all over the place, Jill. Come on. And she says that it's really important for her to have for Kendall to have the the solo, which I found interesting. Kendall says it's interesting not interesting or funny. It's funny. It's funny. Yeah, I mean, when Jill says it's important to Jill, yes. that Kendall have it. In the meantime, then you see the shot of Kendall playing with the is it Xbox or whatever. I didn't notice that when we watched. Oh my God, it's I didn't. I didn't notice that. But you know, hey, listen. If you know, if I had a kid, I guess I would say it's important to me too. But Kendall says that it's not fair that she needs to audition to get the solo since she beat Chloe. Kendall, I'll tell you, as a little girl, she went there in those interviews. She, I, whether she was told what to say, no, you she know was, what it was good. Okay, she me, spilled tea in those interviews. Okay, she you, was. You know why? Because she had two older sisters. Oh, so she. So she was like mouthy yeah, and older because she yeah. heard them be mouthy. They but, were never mouthy with me. They were wonderful girls. I think were of, were they are wonderful girls. Yes. So her older sister Riley danced for me and she's a lovely young yeah, woman. Yeah, you you love the Vertex. She's married to a professional baseball player. Yeah, like you you've spoken to Jill. Like yes. you guys are very good in yes. today's world. Yes. Yes. So what I think that Kendall truly brought it as like she like as the kids went like she that's why brought, I wanted her on the show she brought why the do you reality think I slammed Joe into that chair and said interview her yeah she she was great but um then Melissa says that she wonders where the tension came from with Abby and Kelly she's like you don't know is she paying attention or yeah. is she like living somewhere else in her own head and then all of a sudden she like laugh or like the 90210 and she gets like <laughs> just so, like that evil witch laugh and so excited about yeah. things and it was all like you mentioned the kids modeling and page modeling and and the you know and maddie did all that stuff too and then it's like the next thing is oh now someone's gonna pay her to model mm. so screw you the other people that she learned stuff from because now these people are gonna pay you to model. Then mm. these people are gonna pay you to have your own clothing line. Then these people are gonna, and it's just use you, use you, make money, use you, make money. Not the longevity of the company. We'll talk about that. We could do a whole podcast on uh, Melissa, the user. Yeah, there's there's a lot to unpack with just what, every what you single person. Unpack? You say well, no, time. because that's literally, well, <laughs> unpack is kind of funny as far as suitcases go with, oh, certain, yes. with yes. certain mother. Christy says that Abby would blackball anybody who leaves the studio. I think that you would just be happy that some people left the studio. Kelly I says- think she's, I think what she's talking about is uh, the organization that I was very involved with. I was the, I was on the board. First, I was a member at 21, my 21st birthday, I took my test. I became a member of Dance Masters of Pennsylvania slash Dance Masters of America. And then I was, a member for X number of years. Then I got on the board of directors mm -hmm. for so many years. Then I ran for second vice president, then first vice, then president, then your past president. So that was 20 years of my life in that organization. If you are a member and you have kids, students, you put in things. If that student leaves your studio and goes to another member, they must sit out a year. They are not permitted to compete under you. Mm -hmm. Now, if they move physically their house, they sell their house and they move to a different house and it's X number of miles away, like two hours away, or I think it's two hours away, then you can compete under them. But your first teacher has to release you. So it's a lot. It's to stop kids from hopping from studio to studio. Yeah. Like you don't pay your bill. That's you where owe them the, a lot of money and you leave and you go to another studio. That's where the $100,000 contract came in. Right. So that's just a little bit more background on that. And there's going to be a lot more to discuss, you know, with that as we go on. And that 100,000 refers to if you're a title winner. Yes. If you are like, let's say, Teen Miss Dance of America for me and you quit and you go somewhere else. Then that's bad. I'm suing you for 100 grand. Yeah. Because you gave up that title. You tarnished my relationship. 
my reputation, my this, my and that. And they signed a contract and it was in writing that you had the legal right and to do plus it. Plus all the stuff that you get from the organization for winning like the free hotel room and the airfare and all that goes expenses, into it. A yeah. lot of expenses. So That's then Kelly, she, Kelly comes back. Chrissy always talks about things and she thinks the whole world understands it and they don't. Yeah, there's a lot more to, you know, really go in when it comes to this kind of stuff. So Kelly and her girls come back. They say that they want to finish out the year. And, you know, she keeps making me do things that make me want to leave, she said, because, you know, you had asked, why do you keep coming back? And you said, just stay the hell away. <laughs> that, you, you really you really went there on that one. And then she said that her kids want to be there. Or that's why they're there. Then we go to the audition for Silence. So Holly says that, you know, in an interview, you like they, we may be doing, you know, an audition, but we all know who has the final say. And I think, well, let me I, ask when you. When they say they all know, they watch the kids do the dance. Yeah. They saw what we saw. Mm -hmm. Then the moms obviously picked their own kids, as they would. You know, I think everybody knew that that was going to happen. So Christy says Chloe that has been a team player for They're a long time. Predictable. Yeah. A team player. Then obviously it's a three-way tie. You say that Melissa is going to be the one to break the tie. And I loved it because I think you went there because you knew that Melissa was friends with this one one day, friends with this one the next day. And you know what? Now you got to be honest. You got to see, you know, who's, whose person she's going to try to impress this time. I don't think time. Melissa and, and honest can ever, ever be go, in the same uh, sentence. No, no. I think but, everybody would agree with that, unfortunately. It's yeah, not like, you know. But I, know she, I think, though, what I was doing is trying to put her on the spot. Yeah. She just sits there. She was surprised. Like this goofy yeah. teenager with this goofy girl. And she was, you know, she thought that she didn't need to vote kind of thing. And uh, then you said that she, you're sick of her playing sides. She says that, you know, Nia has shown them that, you know, she deserves the solo. She and picked Nia because it was no threat to Maddie. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you brought that up last night when we watched and I never thought of that. I Come never on. thought, I She's never, so calculated. I Come never, on. that's something that these people listening, I hope and that's that, cruel. It is cruel. Of course yes. it's cruel. I mean, then Jill all of a sudden goes, based on that performance, you would pick Nia. Then Holly just says that you're being, she's being ridiculous. And, you know, then you were like, okay, well, who's going to give us the most points? Then she says, Chloe once, never says it again. Kendall starts crying, you know, saying that, you know, you wanted me to, you wanted Chloe to beat me. Okay, I wait, don't think that she was talking back, to you. Jump back for a second. Do a little tuck jump backwards. Okay. Do you not think that they went home that night in that hotel room and there was an all out screaming match with a little girl named Maddie and her mother with both of them with their fingernails in their mouth that that mother picked Chloe, mm. especially after she beat her and she won? Mm. <sighs> Well, I'm sure later on, too. But then, um, you know, Jill's like, of course, Chloe gets it. The last day of rehearsal, um, you had said that Gianna looked amazing here at the time. You know, at the time, she was kind of, you know, her hair was up. You know, you everybody was finding their way, you know, being on TV. And I think that she at this She looks like point, a dancer. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, she's all over right now. So, you know, Gianna will also be on this podcast a few times, I'm sure. Uh, then you had said, or we're, we're going to go out and we're going to do what we've all been trained to do. And you said, I think that Chloe has what it takes to win in an interview. You, because you did. Like, this is something that people forget. Like, at the time, you genuinely did have faith in the kid based on her track record. Chloe when says she was still a student and she was still coming to class and she that's, still loved to dance. That is something that we will dive right. into at another right. time. She, Yes, that is something that we definitely will dive into at another time because she wasn't a student at one point after... Um, a certain season. So Chloe says that she wants to make Nia and Kendall proud since they didn't get the opportunity. Sweet. Um, all the girls loved each other. They really did. Like for the most part, I think based on a viewer perspective, Christy uh, says that getting beat by Kendall was a blow to Chloe's confidence. She uh, encourages her because she gets kind of worked up. And you know, you said that the gets mother worked her. up. Gets kind of worked up. And if that was your mother, wouldn't you be worked up every second? Then, um, <laughs> Here comes Kathy into the last day of rehearsal. How convenient. Uh, she says that the rehearsal space is under her budget. And she walks in and sees you in rehearsal and is like, ooh, that's a butt I don't want to see. Are they? And then they're like, are they cra crash, test crash dummies? You know, what she had, you know, ha everybody has their opinions of Kathy. She, like you said, she's the first person cast on the show. And that right there was like just one of the reasons. Just the quick, you you too though. Like you both really are so quick at the, 
one-liners out of nowhere with no hesitation. You know, she's really good with the one-liners, but she's they're always like so pessimistic and so yeah. and so schoolgirl. Yeah, like yeah. going after the weight, going after the look, which going she regrets. after the this, going after the which, that, which yeah. she is apologized for yeah, in I mean, she today's has an world. On her too. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. We, everybody does. Me too. You said that they should be afraid of you. Like Kathy's kids should be afraid of your kids, and then all of a sudden they start cl- chanting "Clean Chloe's clock." I thought this was the dumbest chant ever. I, I still don't understand the clock. It? Who came in and said it? It's that it was Holly. No, who came in? And it was Kelly that them. announced it in front of all the kids. Yeah, it was right Kelly. again. Again, here's Kelly. She acts like she's one of the kids. Mm-hmm. She's crying, boo hoo hoo. She's leaving, boo hoo hoo. And now she comes in and says that right in front of Chloe. Yeah. Wouldn't she try to say, oh my God, they're out there screaming. They act like they're like idiots out there. Mm-hmm. No, she thinks it's funny and silly to put down this child and say that people are chanting about her. When in the meantime, what I wanted to say, I don't know if they show me saying it, but when I'm thinking back, I probably, this is something I would say to any of the kids. Hey, Prove them that's wrong. a good thing. They're threatened by you. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't be chanting your name well, if e- you were nobody. Even with certain things, like when they don't know your name, that's when you have to worry. That's yes, what you always actually, say. But do you understand what I'm saying? So rather mm-hmm. than Kelly coming in and say that, say coming in and saying, hey, Chloe, they must be really worried about you. Mm-hmm. That's the way. Or Maddie, looks like they're not worried about you. Mm-hmm. Looks like they're worried about Chloe. Just you know, in like, a not, if, if, yeah. But in a, like an adult, why would you mention it? Yeah. I mean, Why reality you, show, you know, they're on a reality make, show. Make it loud. But, make yourself so loud that the kid can't hear what they're saying. Yeah, it's true. And then That's hurtful. <laughs> Kathy barges in while you're sitting there and then you're like, whoa, like, you know, because you were obviously startled. And then you said uh, you have to remove yourself or you'll be evicted from the premises. And you slam the door on her. And then Christy comes over and she's like, Abby, for once I'm on your side. And I think that the fans, especially me, like loved that. Like, I know that they're so, 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 well, I was so seeing the group or her kid or something. Your your group. Right. And, you know, I just, as a fan, any time that you and Christy weren't fighting, it was nice to see. So Justice's mom apparently was reaching out to you for more information to kind of get him involved in your studio, denied it. She wanted to take our summer program. Yeah. Then you, you know, basically exposed her and then Kathy and her walked off camera. They thought that they were off camera. They forgot that they were mic'd, of course. And then it comes out that obviously she did do that. So you were saying last, yeah, Mm -hmm. you said last night that you know, potentially maybe Melissa lied to you about it at the time. Cause you don't really know what to believe anymore from the past. I don't, based on I don't everything because when I look back at things and I think about, you know, being in Australia or think about this and I think about that, I'm like, Oh my God, Melissa did that. And I never realized it yeah. at the time. Yeah. So I'm thinking, wait a minute, did Melissa lie that the woman called, but she wasn't that smart. You yeah. know, I like mean, she was, she, but not about no, that. But she could lie about stuff, but she got all excited and came running in the room to tell me uh-huh. that Justice's mother called about information. Like that was a big deal to her because it was like a scoop. It was like gossip. Yeah. So let's fa- let's flash forward to the competition. You said that you want to make red, beefy, jerky blood on the dance floor with candy apples. Right. Jerky as, uh, you know, Kathy's husband, uh, I believe still, I don't think he owns the jerky, the meat business anymore. I, think I don't she think said, it went very well. Especially after the TV thing. So uh, I made a comment that your hair is similar as, as it is now. Kathy says it would be nice to come home with a win finally, especially, give, especially given that it's a nationals uh, title or national title for a television show, I should say. Uh, they were chanting outside the uh, dressing room, C, A, D, you know, like just oh, it's kind of like- Is it candy? C-A-N-D. Yeah, C-A-N-D. yeah. I mean, hey, just find a better. Let's see, A D C A N D. Yeah, maybe they said it like that. I'm, I'm just, you know, not phrasing it right. So you said that you'd be mortified if any, if your teacher made you do that. And then we go to Justice's performance. Oh no, that's the funny clip. Mm-hmm. Anything to make Maddie look bad. So they have Maddie. Oh yeah. Doing this little, yeah. like, like Mom, mocking it, mocking it. Yeah. Da, 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 yeah. da, 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 but they show the same clip of her mocking them three times. The yeah. same exact clip. Like we shoot, there's seven cameras. I Yeah, between the moms, the dancers, me, seven cameras on us for 
eight hours a day mm -hmm. for five days. Yeah. And they used the same clip three times. That was to make the kid look bad. And that's a shame. That's, that's definitely a shame. But you look cute. It was funny. You said to find justice and psych him out to your soloist, you know, and you, well, we did. I watched her do the turn back. Yeah. You were, you were proud of Chloe he, in that and moment. He, and he's, she, he was right there. Yep. So I love how they pick the worst dances to show at the competition during the transitions, like the worst ones. And like, Hey, God bless you. If you saw yourself on dance moms and you were one of those kids, but I'm sure now you realize you oh. should not have been the one shown. <laughs> I, I, at least me, like, Hey, I don't there know about other good kids there. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I do not know about, technical style dancing or anything like that. Why did they do that? Why did they do that? Are they just maybe to make you guys not that you better? yeah, not that you needed it, but maybe to make you guys look better. No, there were times we needed to look better. <laughs> but why did they pick the worst kids, the worst costumes, the worst choreography, the worst yeah. numbers to show other kids competing? I don't know. I really could not. Well, tell if you. it's to make us look better, then thank you. Yeah, but oh my! <laughs> I, I God. doubt that the network it was trying it to help didn't you there. Make, it didn't make the competition. So look better. Maddie's performance. Little tiny section they showed of her, bobbled twice. And maybe that's why she lost. Maybe that's why because she, she got second. So maybe that's why she well, lost. Sorry to spoil it. You all, look, you all know. But. Who knows? And I'm going to be hated by this. Who knows if she lost? It was the lady that owns that energy. Mm. She was the one that I. Ended, she ended up being on Kathy's team. I was point. fined $80,000. Oh. Does everyone know this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think that we knew which competition or who was responsible it for that. It didn't happen yet, but it was $80,000 I was fined for not going to a competition, for refusing to go because I knew it was fixed. It's the same competition. Yeah. Same owner, mm -hmm. same lady running it. So who knows that in season two nationals, that it wasn't fixed in Clay one. Well, I mean, I think that at one point later on, you you really didn't know what to believe anymore. Uh, yeah, I, relationships with the moms, some, just some everything. competition. Some I knew it was on the up and up, and they weren't going to play into the producers' hands. This woman was because she had her own daughter, she had a hidden agenda, she had ulterior motives, and she wanted her own kid to be on TV. And I'm not going to say a any specific ones, but do you ever think that competitions favored you? Or wanted to give, wanted to make their first place the one, the ones featured on the show. Like, do you think that competitions? Yes, you deserved every win that you got. And no, then some? no, we didn't. The, the competitions, we went to competitions that the competitions needed promoted. Gotcha. They needed. So it looked to good have, for them to make make more money. So it looked good they, for them to have first place go to the stars of the show. Kind no, of. it made it made them look good to be on TV. Gotcha. And if the producer said, look, we want Chloe to win and Maddie not to win. They're going to do whatever they say. They're going to do whatever they say. That's yeah. why I'd like to go into sheer or to star power or to whatever, because they weren't going to play that game. I've been teaching dance for years, starting in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And then with the success of the television show, Dance Moms and Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition, I've had the pleasure of traveling outside the U.S. to work with students from across the globe. As much as I get to travel, there are so many places I can't make it to in a year. It wasn't until the world shut down and Zoom became our new normal that I realized how easily I could connect with you all over the world. Every weekend, I teach a virtual technique class. There are students who join from Israel, the Philippines, Australia, England, Ireland, Scotland, Finland, you name it. I teach my legs and feet curriculum, flexibility, a fabulous warm up that you can use every day, and answer your questions on how to impress those judges at your next competition. Now I'm working hard to get to your country in person between filming, but get a head start on your training and join our ALDC WW Zoom classes. Registration is available every week at ALDCWorldWideLive.com. Again, that's ALDCWorldWideLive.com. Get a leg up on your competition this season, and I'll see you on Zoom. Like you say now, she's a little off watching it, but in person in your interview, you were like, she's right on the money. That's a national award winning yes. when, number. When you're there and you're watching it live, 
on stage and all the variables are there. The lighting, the cameramen walking back and forth, mm-hmm. the kids in the wings of the stage, the music, that seeing a dance or a performance live is so much more intense and it looks so much better when you watch it on camera. Yeah. That's a teaching aid. You videotape a kid at dress rehearsal. I let the parents videotape at dress rehearsal, not during the show, Mm -hmm. because we hire a professional, and then they have to buy it. It's a money-making thing for dance teachers. But at dress rehearsal, you want them to videotape it so the kid can go home and watch it, Mm -hmm. watch it in the car on the way home. When you come back that night, you want to be better. And that brings me to a great point, guys. There are videos that we have of all the competitions we don't really know exactly how far back, um, but on our Patreon, you are going to be able to watch oh, that's unedited, right. unedited dances and some that were not featured on the show. And keep in mind, that's just from competitions Wait, on weren't, dance. Weren't moms. featured on the show. Weren't shown on weren't the show. Shown weren't shown on aired. the show. And also, we have the sh- video from the Wings, which is a completely different perspective. There's on the that. Camera. There's your recitals. We didn't say recitals. Your da- Recital then, is a bad word. Then, it's like yeah, boring, yeah. bunch of little Your kids. Your dance concerts. Our dance concerts. Um, there's just so much content. And I think that you guys are going to be a little overwhelmed, but we're yeah, a little overwhelmed. Great dancers. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's but really remember great. remember when you watch, it's better to be there live. Yes, You don't absolutely. see the little flaws and the mistakes yeah. when it's live because mm-hmm. you're caught up in the whole moment. So again, just head over. It is uh, Abby Lee Miller. So uh, Justice uh, and Chloe's watching off stage and she's smiling and, you know, thinks that it's like really cute. She's supporting her friend. Um, then she does the turns in front of Justice, just like you said, just like you told her to do. She listened for once. She, she listened. Instead of to her mother, she listened to me. <laughs> then Justice performs and then you saw you said that you saw a ton of flaws in the choreo and then his mom, Tanya, was chewing gum and I know that you hate that. Oh my God. I she never, I have never chewed gum around Abby Lee Miller. And there's a reason. <laughs> and, but the, I've never seen Abby Lee Miller chew gum Trying to be either. sexy and hot and this and that. And then she's this kid and, and the choreo is so bad. It's just, there's no connection. He doesn't dance. Mm-hmm. He just does a leg and then he poses. And then another thing and a poses and a jump. But he's a boy, so he's just going to get extra points anyway. Not always. Not always. But I mean, just most of the time. But he's good. Like mm-hmm. he had the, the elements to be a dancer. Flexible. But what he was given was could tumble, was given crap. Then you come in and you say that you're super happy that Abby did a, or excuse me, Maddie did a national award winning solo. Kelly says that she ran Brooke's dance 10 times and no one is working with her. Uh, Mackenzie is hugging Brooke and then right before she goes on, Brooke performs. This was a solo that was done in the past by your student. We talked about this. Brooke throws Mackenzie off of her, like, get away from me. Don't touch me. Uh, I loved though at the end, I know that you don't think it's that big, but I love in the music, like where she just like tosses the book, like the diary off the stage. That's my thing. I know that's your thing, but I just, I love that. Well, good. It didn't really slide as far as it should have. It stopped. Oh, did it? It's supposed to go under the curtain. It's supposed oh. to go past the curtain into the wings. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't never even notice that. Never see the book that. again, because diary. Anne Frank hides the diary. So oh. she looks that way because they're coming to get mm-hmm. her. They know they're keeping yeah. them hidden in the house. So the Nazis are coming in the door. They're, she hears them coming to the attic, and she takes the book, and she slides it. So you see her face is looking at the door. She pushes the book away to hide it. And hence, we have the diary of Anne Frank. Because oh. Anne hid the diary. And that's where, that's how we know about all this. That's how we know about all this. Right. You see, this is why this is the dance digest. This is the dance digest portion of our podcast. And this is the stuff that you don't necessarily hear in the show that made the reality cut. So I love that because that gives a whole historical context to it. And that is super cool, especially from somebody like me who really loved this dance. And that's probably the one actual part that she did use her face. Like you yeah. see her body turn. Yeah. Now in another kid, I could just use the face more front and the book away. But Mm -hmm. because it's Brooke and you never know what you're going to get out there with the face, I had her turn all the way profile. So she's looking at them coming up to the attic. She can hear them and she pushes the book away. So you're not looking where you're throwing it. You're looking at the door and they're hiding it. And then she never knows where it goes because they come to get her. Mm. So it went through this nook and this cranny and this, you know, where you all know from reading it in school where she hid the book. Apparently Kelly didn't read it in school <laughs> because in the diary of Anne Frank in a uh, previous episode, she said that she had never seen it. So I was like, what? Because Kelly can't read. Okay. 
moving on. Then Kelly said that she's hurting the kids by pulling them out of your studio because of that performance, just being so amazed at what her daughter could do, which I found very interesting. Mackenzie. Uh, look, she's hurting them because where's she going to go? I mean, come on, get real. Her own sister owned a dance studio and her kids didn't even go there. Mackenzie says that she's nervous about what Kathy and Vivi are going to do to her because she's doing, you know, Vivi solo. So she's really cute saying that. She performs Honey Bee or Killer Bee. I think that you actually ended up making the written title. Yes. You said that it's light years better than Vivi's. You know, you can tell that she loved it. And there's she a shot of her in the audience watching Mackenzie do the dance. Yeah. And she's just like blank, like didn't I probably didn't realize. It didn't even register that she had I, heard that. And you know, before. when we've talked to Vivi cuz we've 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 like done content with Vivi as well. She does not remember anything. Like she <laughs> she was the most I, you know, I said that Kendall really brought it. Vivi brought <laughs> so much the fans love her and i you know cheers to vivi we don't have anything to cheers but cheers to vivi for giving the world so much content and the best thing she can't even remember it no we don't drink or eat on this show no no yeah. but i'm just saying like i wish that we had some way no, of cheersing her but anyway well, vivi kudos love ya. To you. kudos yeah. to you and you said she buzz buzz buzzed around the stage like there was no tomorrow uh you came in and you hugged all the girls all the girls didn't perform just yet but you had said that, look at Kendall playing some video games. So that's where the scene was, where yeah. she was playing the video it game. Was, but I was there in the room with her, so it was the whole week. Yeah. yeah. Christy told Chloe to dance for Kendall and Nia, that there was a whole discussion that you had about the tape over Chloe's face that was not a, even part of the yes. dance until the competition. That is what is so bizarre to me. That they didn't that put that in. it's not in the episode. So we're in the dressing room. We're at the last minute. And I'm watching the kids run the numbers, right? And Chloe's doing the dance. Now, mind you, Maddie had a pretty lyrical dance or contemporary, whatever it was, but it wasn't an iconic, as you use that word, yes. way too much. It was, cause <laughs> I hold the word iconic as like way up here. Okay, so it wasn't a Lizzie Borden. It wasn't uh, even a birthday. It wasn't one of those numbers that you just think of her name being mm -hmm. synonymous with. Yeah. Right. It wasn't one of those. It was just pretty and it was fine, but it wasn't a national big to-do. Chloe also had a number called Silence, contemporary. Mm -hmm. It wasn't- Iconic. A gimmick. It wasn't iconic. It was just simple and pretty and nice and clean and fine. I needed to do something to push it over the edge, to make it different. And I said, get me a piece of tape. I'm putting it on her mouth. With her, it was like this last minute change got put in and it changed the whole dynamic of the dance. And that's why she won. And that I hope she did win too. I hope that she did win and that that woman that owned that energy dance, I hope that she wasn't cheating and succumbing to the producer's wishes back then. And hey, I mean, you know, Chloe didn't bobble a turn. You said that she held the turns really well. She did. So she who did. knows? Maybe it was literally well, just that. the turns that we saw. The certain turns that we you saw. You know, the minute, the dance is like a minute yes. 20 and we see 20 So seconds. silence is performed. You know, she danced after all the other girls. Abby says that, you know, Chloe could be amazing or a freaked out mess. This time she was amazing. Holly says that she was happy that Chloe got the dance and she needs it more than any other kid because she had a lot to prove. But thank God my own Nia didn't have it. Because it wouldn't have won, respectfully. Thank you. Yeah, there respectfully. You but so at least she was intelligent enough to see, I don't want that pressure on my kid, I don't want my kid holding the weight, and I don't want my kid dropping the bag. But later on, Nia ended up winning often. Like in season seven, like her routine, the how to get away with murder, right. that routine was amazing. Right. Well, and she at developed- At that moment in time, right then and there, she could rather not, than yes. crying and running out because my kid didn't get the solo- She realized that she wouldn't have won. She realized she really wasn't ready to do that solo. No, and, right. and, that's, and that's what Kelly doesn't get. And I think that's what set Holly aside from the other mothers. As much as you two have your own tension that you had on and off the show, I think that was something that, you know, really set her aside. Well, I think as a teacher too, you have to deal with parents yep. and she realized she was dealing with mothers, the same mm -hmm. thing. I want my kid in this accelerated class. I want my kid in the AP course, blah, blah, blah. And they weren't ready. The kid wasn't yeah. ready. Meaning, I don't mean her children. I mean other pupils of 
of other parents. Yeah. And she had to deal with that. So she knew it from the other side. So we're nearing the end of the episode here. And Christy was crying, saying that no matter what and or who gets that crown, she won in her eyes, as all the mothers say eventually. Candy Apples uh, performed The Storm. They, they've done better since then because they brought on friends like John, like your friend. Um, we'll talk more about that. Friends. Yeah. My friends. Yes, but... your friends. Uh, Christy and Kelly were making fun of them in the audience, which we noticed last night. That was um, awful. You, that was awful. Yeah, you've you've been in the audience many, many times, but never during the show did you ever make fun of a kid. If anything, if you didn't want to watch, you'd be on your phone. Like that, you know, and that was... Oh, yeah, with my know. head down and... Yeah. yeah, but you know you don't speak about other people's children while they're performing in an audience. You don't know whose mom or whose dad is in the audience. You tell me that, you, and everybody, you know, my directors told me that as well. So you said, let's let the talent speak for itself. You said, she looks amazing, trained by me. Maybe she's distracted, million pretty girls in Hollywood. Beauty can fade, right, Kelly? I think that was because she had made a comment about how you didn't work with, um, or no, she was showing off Paige's photo shoot. So you were saying, oh, maybe she was distracted. Maybe <laughs> there's a million girls in Hollywood, Kelly. Don't, you know, beauty can fade, you know, but, you know, the talent here, like, that's what's going to last. So. No, I meant Kelly was pretty once. Oh, oh, okay. She it was a dig it. at Kelly. It was okay. Her. See, it was uh, see, her. on the show, it looked like it was a dig at Paige. So no, that's no, because you Kelly, love Paige. Kelly, yeah. you know, you know, beauty can fade, Kelly. You know, but meaning Dumb is her forever. beauty. Yeah, Dom is forever. Right. Then you said, "Don't blow it. Don't be the kid that ruins the whole number." The last text performs. Uh, Mackenzie had the most blood on her outfit in the back, and she was in the back seat. Right. That's who gets shot out through the window. Through the window. That's why she went first. Yes. That's why she's went. For, you see, guys, I'm getting it. I'm, I do my research. Yes. you. Well, of course you do. But like the fans don't necessarily put two and two together. They just think, oh, my God, the last text texting driving. They don't make all of these connections. So that's yes. why the Dance Digest, this is really So good. when you crash, the, I, I, I sadly, uh, friends, colleagues from Canada were driving to Myrtle Beach mm -hmm. for a huge competition. And uh, a little girl in a backseat in the middle unfastened her seatbelt to lean forward to get mm. something from her mom snack or something and she sat back down and before she could fasten her seatbelt again they were in a huge accident with a tractor trailer truck and the child went out of the back seat over the middle seat through oh. the front window and was killed instantly oh, that's and horrible. um it was very controversial as to everybody that was driving. Did they continue and go and do the competition and reblock the numbers without her? Or did they turn around and start driving home? What'd they do? It was some went and some didn't. Wow. Yeah. Was that what this number was inspired by? No, no, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. No. I just okay. know that I just know. You just that, know looking back in context. It was just okay. a big thing in the, in at the time, yeah. Public, in yeah. the news. This was a PSA. This was one of your PSA it, it, exactly, numbers. Exactly. And you had said that you ran over these dresses. You they were didn't the only, show that They either. didn't show that, no. And that was great. And it was funny. And I was pissed, pissed off that you have all these pretty people that work on production. You have PAs. They make like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like nothing, like a hundred bucks a day or whatever. But they're out there and they are doing nothing. I walk out and they're smoking, they're eating, they're drinking, that they're, you know, chit chatting with each other. I had to get in my car, mm -hmm. lay the dresses down and drive over them back and forth and back and forth to get the, the tire marks on them in the, in the grass and everything on them. Not and grass, sorry, that, tire marks and rubble and blood. It just would've been funny, like especially now for like To TikTok. show me ticked, like, leaning out the window, backing yeah. up over these dresses, yes. And now like just obviously with social media and stuff, like if I'm with you, like when you're filming your next project and you'd be doing something like that, I would be making a TikTok out of it. You well, know? they should have been filming it for the show. Well, I'm just saying, like, I think that there'd be somebody filming behind you if they weren't right. to use it. That way we right. could still show people yes. that that was well, what was going maybe, on. maybe, you know, in a YouTube video coming up, yeah. we could, I can get my van and drive over some dresses. Oh, my God, yeah. It. That would be hysterical. We should totally do that, even if it's just for TikTok. Yes. So, uh, Kathy's blown away, says that she, at first she saw this crappy car seat that probably came off of Christie's front porch, she said. <laughs> Damn, that was good. Then but that's uh, where Christy lived. But then she was, she had. yeah. Then she was taken. You know, she was, you know, you know, speechless at how good it was. Then you had said, which I really felt, and you know, you've spoken to me about this a lot. How when it was silent, yeah. that was one of the best moments of your life. 
And you've d- had those moments many you times. You know what? I'm sitting here thinking we're doing a podcast so people listen with their ears, mm-hmm. right? And uh, the number ended and I, you feel it. Yeah. And I just was going to say, I heard it. Mm. I heard the silence. I heard the gasp. Mm. I heard the awe. You know, it's like, ah, you hear it. Yeah. And it's silent. And sometimes silence is golden, you know. And it was just an amazing number. Of course, one of your best. People don't know whether to clap because a bunch of kids just got killed in a car accident. Do you clap? Do you standing ovation? Do you not clap? Is it rude? What do you do? When you don't know what to do, Mm -hmm. I won. Yeah. And and that was amazing, whether the number was going to get first or not. Um, Well, I mean, we all knew it was going to get first. Let's have a round of a plus for the t-shirt throwers, which I thought was dumb, but you know, funny. Then you said that- Yeah, they're the big uh, real nationals. They don't do that. Yeah, the t-shirts okay. thing. Yeah. Mackenzie wins first place. She has in the blood- mini, In the little Yes, uh, and she's got blood all over her face and she gets the crown for uh, M- Miss Energy. It's funny, she looks like Carrie. She does, right. she does, which Jojo ends up doing and then yes. Eliana. Then you look so nervous. That's just always how you look in the audience. Brooke ends up winning first place. In the teen division. In the teen division. Kelly said that uh, she did it without her dance teacher. Yes. So (laughs) from age three. Okay. Yeah. To 14. However old she was here. 13, Mm -hmm. 14. From age three to 14. Dance classes. Private lessons. Solo choreography. Year after year after year after year. She did it without me. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. 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 I think in that moment, you know, she wanted you to run the number once with her. I'm sure Gianna did. I'm sure. Right? Yes. I like, I mean, who knows? Maybe she didn't. But um, Or get out your old videotape and watch yeah. Stephanie Schlarman do it. So Justice wins third. Then Maddie gets second. And Christy, from that moment, freaks out because she knows that Chloe won. She mm-hmm. knew, and it was such a triumph for her because her daughter had wanted to win first at nationals, win against Maddie. That's kind of what so, we'll say. So yeah. then we have, we in the whole show we have Jill, but she be Chloe, but she be Chloe, but she be Chloe. Now we have to have, yeah. but Chloe be Maddie, but, but, but she be Maddie, but she be Maddie. It's just like, oh my God, how about she won? She, she won. She beat everyone. Yes. She like beat they, everyone. She beat a lot of people on the stage, yeah, not just right, Maddie. Right, um, But you see Maddie's face. Yeah. Anytime that Maddie got second, you just saw it on her face. And listen, I'm one of those people too, that like when something, I don't like something, you know. So Christy starts crying. Chloe wins first. Junior Miss Energy. Kelly is, uh, or excuse me, Kendall is the first one to jump up in the audience. She's giving Chloe a standing ovation. Yep. Yep. She was the first one to support her. Kathy says that there are a few dances that impact her, like Abby's last text number. Uh, you say that the moms had nothing to do with it because Kathy was saying great job to them. And you were like, the moms had nothing to do with it. No, so I don't nothing. know why. In yeah. fact, if they would have shut up and gone to lunch somewhere every day, we would have been better had it done sooner than we did. Yeah. It would have even been better without other commotion. So then, you know, you say that the moms have nothing to do with it. Then Kathy makes a smart remark. And then you said, you're not going to ruin this day. That ends when up. When you think of the numbers that I've done or Gianna's done or whoever, like that we've done for the show. Imagine if we weren't fighting with anyone at the time. Yeah. Imagine if the kids got dropped off and nobody came. There would be drama that would have happened in its own like there would have been reality, like without the drama well, and the. There would have been a kid crying, or there would have been a kid laughing, yeah, they or didn't goofing need off. There the, would have been that yeah. anyway. But just imagine the the caliber of work we could have done with real music. Yes. Picking it ourselves, getting the theme ourselves, picking our dancers that we wanted to do what parts ourselves and what yeah. solos. Are. I mean, I mean, come on. Yeah, a lot would have been different, but then. Um, Maybe it will be. <laughs> Kathy says that there's a McDonald's burger with your name on it. That was a, a comment that Could, did not. Do I get like a residual for that brand deal? Yeah, right. For that McDonald's? Thing? Yeah, I'd right. Love that. Um, that comment did not age well. Kelly is sobbing, does not want to come back. Abby says that things are taken for granted. That she's that. Is Ke- this the end? Of this the is show? the end of the episode. So, yeah. so we win nationals. Yeah. We win with an amazing stellar routine. Chloe, her best friend's kid, wins. The whole thing beats her rival Uh and she's crying and miserable and it's about her. 
Yeah, I think it was becoming very real that that was the last competition of the season, and it was probably like, okay, well, I just really don't want to come back now because she didn't want to relive it. But at the same time, she yeah, she was making it about her. She from all of those people. Yeah. It's not like she's going to miss them. They're there. Yeah, that's true. You say that you think that she takes things for granted. People don't realize the hell, the way that you said it. People don't realize the hell that woman has put me through. Well, yeah, and if they're your really good friends and you quit and go to another dance studio, aren't they going to all go with you? Aren't your kids so good and so talented that they want to still be in the group with you so they're going to go to your dance studio with you? Yeah, maybe, maybe isn't not. that Isn't that what should have happened? I guess not. <laughs> And uh, you said that Brooke was outstanding. Uh, you said that she finally wanted it. Like you saw that she finally wanted a win and she got a win. So you thought that she was outstanding. Now you're kind of not so not so sure. You hug Chloe first. I'm pointing out when you came into the room. Absolutely. Uh, you hugged Chloe first. Not that people need to know about the nitty gritty of who you hugged first, who you didn't hug. I just want people to realize that like you loved the kid. You loved oh, the kid. Absolutely. And, and I, I hate hearing it that you hated, like that that you despised Chloe and that was your, your goal in life to make her feel bad. It just, it's not, it's not that complicated. If, if you cared that much about that, then you wouldn't, it, other things wouldn't have worked. No, and it, as time went on, what I despised, what I hated. Well, I know yeah. the kid was miserable and wanted to be with the other kids doing what we were doing. Yeah. Not off on her own by herself. We'll definitely right. dive into that. Right. So uh, you hug Brooke and all the rest of them. Then you say... Because we had fun on our stuff. We did. We're all we going to have fun. We're all going to have fun. And we had fun, fun, fun. Yes. And we were together and it was fun. Yes. And, you know, I think that that's a really great place to leave it. You said that uh, you made people think. You talked that, to Joanne from season yeah. eight all the time. All the time. And Love Joanne. what was the best part of being on the show. Going to the UK with, with Abby Lee Miller and doing all the fun experiences that the kids got to do together. That that um, was the best part of being on a TV show was yeah. going to London with me. Yeah. So like, that's what I'm saying about this situation. With yeah. Abby. Abby says at the end that to the kids, you made people think and that is art. I loved that quote. I love, love, loved that quote. Thank you. Then Jill complimented you, said you did a great job, you know? You did, a, you gee, did a good job. Gee, once. Once I did a good job. <laughs> you did a good job this week. Good job. <laughs> you good guys job. you guys know who we're referring to. Yes. Uh, then at the end, it's uh, Brooke's video for Summer Love Song, which you directed. No. Well, you, you were there holding the camera. I was? Yeah. I don't think you I were had on the bus. to do with that. You were on the bus and you were holding the camera. Maybe they didn't yeah, use the footage I, that you yeah, got or that I, was just for the show. I, didn't I don't do know. That. I produced several songs in yes. my life. I have... My songs are number one hits uh -huh. in three countries and on iTunes. Some of which you've, well, the important ones you've seen pennies from, but some that you haven't. And apparently Brooke hasn't seen a penny from Summer Love Song. That's bull. Well, somebody must, I don't know. But that's that's just, I'm just saying what, what apparently has been going on. But Abby, this has been amazing. Season two. Thank nine, you. Uh, you know, the Nationals. We're going to dive into a bunch more national episodes. But this was a good one. This was a good one. This was a long one. You know, guys, you know, I'm grateful for that. You stuck around. You know, remember. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your ears. Thank you for your eyes. Thank you for your hearts. And uh, thanks for watching. And now go to Patreon and you are going to see some pictures you've never seen. Before. As well as YouTube Premium. Yes, YouTube, YouTube Premium, Premium. We and have. Uh, we have all kinds of things. Yes, and where can they follow you, Abby, on Instagram? Disney What's Plus. Your... No. <laughs> yeah, Disney Plus now. Yeah. No, no, no. We don't get any residuals. Yeah. Do not watch. Do not watch. Yeah. Do not watch. Uh, follow me on Instagram at the Real Abby Lee. My YouTube is the Real Abby Lee Miller. So subscribe, like, turn on your post notifications, and all that jazz. Uh, Abby, what advice would you like to send us off with today? based on what we went through today in our lives, oh, based on the episode. Goodness. Give me a word of wisdom. Save your tears for the pillow. Do not ugly cry in front of a camera. That's a good one. All right, guys. See you next time. Get up, get up.